Lakeland, Nebraska, in a college baseball season that has seen a record number of home runs and star power like never before. Tonight's the breaking point. Two perennial powers, one game to add a title and bring a trophy back to Gainesville or Baton Rouge. What happens next? No one knows. The NCAA Men's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Down to the field and Chris Budden. Hi, Robbie. Florida head coach Kevin O'Sullivan keeps a file folder for all the years that he's made it here. He brought those notes with him to Omaha. And when he looked at the 2017 team that won it all, he said, listen, that team had really good pitching, had really good hitting. But the other thing it did was handle the atmosphere. They played LSU in that championship series when it was a whole bunch of purple and gold. So we told his team remember that the other team thing that that team had was team chemistry that's the similarity he sees between the 2017 team and this one similarities between 17 and, and now we had to go through TCU to get here and now we've got LSU for the final three the crowd obviously is going to be loud and exciting and it's something we're gonna have to embrace we talked about that in 17 but we bonded together as a group we knew it wasn't gonna be easy and it's not going to be easy as well. It's two blue blood programs in college baseball. I mean, there's nothing really to say about it. you got to go out there and play your best baseball at the right time to win, and we're going to have a fantastic opponent to play against with a bunch of really good pitchers, a bunch of good hitters, you know, and, and a good program and a good coach that's going to manage the game well. So, you know, we're very comparable in many ways, but that, I guess that's why we're here. A couple of guys you might remember from that 2017 team, Brady Singer, Jackson Coar in the house to see game three tonight. Singer was outstanding in that series, 2-0, 14 innings, 17 Ks. And here he is, the modern-day Shohei Otani in college. Jack Tani is his nickname. And as Kyle pointed out, he gets ahead. It's a whole different ball game. When he falls behind, the OPS against him goes up to about 1,000. The issue really is just strikes, and that's it. 52 walks and 72 and a third this year for Caglione. He doesn't give up a lot of hits, and he's not going to give up a lot of hits. Caglione throws strikes tonight. Florida's got a real chance. All right, so here's a wrinkle. You get to the last game, and our batting order brought to you by Capital One shows Kate Peloso, who's been their offensive star, moves all the way up to the leadoff spot. It might seem odd, but he has their highest OPS versus left-handers, and in general, lefties have more success against Caglione than righties, so definitely something to follow in the early parts of this game. Wind was blowing out around 20 miles an hour yesterday. It's below 10 tonight as we get set for pitch one of game three. And he drilled his first batter. Wow. An ominous start for Jack Caglione as he drills Peloso in the back. So that's the 13th guy that Caglione has hit this year. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I would bet that the vast majority are left handers and the vast majority are on pitches like that. When that fastball sails, a lot of times it's arm side. Cruz had been the leadoff hitter up until this point from the right side. Beloso from the left side. One pitch and the Tigers have a base run. And it's worth sharing. So against Oral Roberts, a 35 pitch first inning for Caglione. He ended up lasting four and a third, but he hit three. He had two wild pitches and he walked three. And now the Golden Spikes award winner, Dylan Cruz. And that is poured in there. And that is Jack Caglione, right? In a nutshell. <laughs> Right in the middle of the left, yeah. he's back, and then 98 at the knees. No, no. Another one and a fastball, and he'll throw a bunch of those at 98, misses away. Behind him, it's Colby Halter at third base, Josh Rivera, the shortstop, Cade Curl, and Luke Heyman at second and first in the outfield, Shelnut, Langford, Evans. 96, and he's ahead one and two to Dylan Cruz who has reached safely in all 70 games this year. This one is in the air to right, going back, but playable. Evans now drifting, still drifting, and it took him all the way back to the track. The wind is blowing out to dead center, but that one got up in the air, and it found a bit of a pocket and kept riding all the way to the track. Yeah, that's a ball that yesterday would have been a homer. That's how crazy the wind was here at Charles Schwab Field. And today about five feet short. Yep. But if you get it up in the jet stream, it has a shot to go out from foul pole to foul pole today still. Maybe not 50 degree homers like we saw yesterday, yeah. but it's going to play offensive. The shadows are a factor this time of day here in Omaha. And you can see Tommy White standing in the shadows 
Caglione's ball goes through the sun. That's fouled off the catcher. BT Riopel. LSU lost back to back only twice this season. And in a College World Series in which we have seen a record tying number of one run games and that 20 run blowout. Tonight is a bit of a mystery. And the starting pitcher always can play a big role. Aglione's ahead of White, a home run threat, and that's a great pitch off speed. 0 oh, and 2. There is Paul Skeens. We'll keep an eye on him, and, and in particular his feet. Literally, does he have sneakers on, or will he put on yep. you know, some spikes? Sneakers right now. Set up outside, and he got him. Boy, what a bounce back here from Caglione after drilling Beloso. He gets Cruz to fly out and White to punch out. Yeah, so you're, you're not going to hit that one very often. And that's after the changeup. And the changeup from a swing and miss standpoint is actually his best pitch. Then he comes back with 99 arm side run on the outside black. So the first pitch hits Beloso in the belt. Since then, Caglione has been locked in. The first baseman is Trey Morgan. 3-0-8 in the World Series with a couple of doubles and a triple. Woo! Not an easy one to get out of the way of. That was 99 at your chin. So Caglione's average fastball velo is 94.7. Early on, it's been a bunch of 97s and up. So he's obviously got a little extra juice flowing today. You can take two miles off of it and dot it. That's pretty impressive, 97. He has said, man, he wants to do both at the next level until an organization says no. That's high. Wow. Way inside. Thought it had a better chance of hitting him than he did of hitting it. This is a challenge with Caglione, right? Do you go up there aggressive, ready for a fastball, or, or do you let him kind of work around the zone? Same spot. So that that's four balls, right? Like, this is the hard part from an offensive approach is can you – look at this up cam right there. That one's coming right in your living room. And such an uncomfortable at bat. A slider away here, or you just go back to your heat on a 2 2. Wow, he buckled him down. He went swinging at one on his fists again. Jack Caglione hits the first guy and then finds another gear. Two punch outs to end the top of the first. Florida Gator fans, they know we're coming in. We're chomping. We're going to hit the ball over the wall. They're 14 homers in the College World Series, five more than any team since we moved down to Charles Schwab in 2011. That guy, he won it in 17, and it's not necessarily Langford or Caglione or Rivera. It's Ty Evans, as our batting order is brought to you by Capital One. Ty Evans, the most homers ever? Tied for the most homers ever? I don't think anybody had that one coming in. So the Florida offense feeling very good about themselves here coming into this one. Yeah, they're going to get the right-hander, Thatcher Hurd, who... Pitched in Thursday's game against Wake Forest. Come out of the bullpen through the last three innings, mid-90s. I think the question today is how far can he go? And then ultimately, where do you go after it for the Tigers? There's plenty to like. It's a mid-90s fastball with a whole lot of carry. So that four-seamer at the top of the zone is the one that today, similar to Ty Floyd, the Gators are going to have to force down in the zone. Yeah, that Thursday game you mentioned, that was when the ball was handed over from Skeens. So he had a high, high bar to live up to, and he certainly did. Still trying to get over the fastball inside to Trey Morgan, which sent him down to a knee after he swung at it. As Kate Curlin steps in, he's the freshman out of Tampa, Florida. Graduated the year early, enrolled in 22. Been a starter since about a month into the season. What? On the corner strike one from Hurd. UCLA transfer. Very well could be in the weekend rotation next year. One ball, one strike. Everyone is talking about Skeens and his availability. To your point, he just pitched on Thursday. And they got to keep an eye on how much they can get out of Thatcher Hurd. 
Riley Cooper wasn't here yesterday. He is here and he is available on the first breaking pitch misses down and away. LSU has the arms available today uh -huh. to totally flip the script from what happened here yesterday. There, there's no reason they can't go out there and pitch at a very high level with the arms available to them tonight. And that ball is smoked into left center field by Cade Curlin. Good sign on a ball that was up. He turned it around his sixth hit in Omaha. The freshman swinging a bat with a little more confidence as this week has gone on. That's a four seamer up and that is a bullet right through the middle of the field. 106 mile an hour liner to get the Gators started and now Wyatt Langford who was as hot as you could possibly be yesterday. Five hits. That's good. Is that any good? <laughs> He's hitting 381 here in Omaha. Eight for 21. Four doubles. Couple of homers. Seven runs batted in and he challenged them. With a fastball at 96 to get ahead 0 and 1. Not a bad week for Langford. He has now the two longest home runs ever hit during the World Series. 449 yesterday, 456 earlier. Come back. It is not going to come back. It had the spin that it would have had it not been far enough outside the field of play. And there they are. <laughs> the common theme is 2023. Yeah, he's uh, he's got six balls hit this week at 105 or harder. Nobody else has more than four. One of the best ball strikers you will ever see right here. No, no. Boy, a wow. diving stop what by Alvis Alonso. <laughs> a diving stop to make sure it doesn't get to the backstop. Not only did he go airborne, <laughs> but I mean, he's like an acrobat. This back is, this. I mean, this is like pretty. <laughs> and the team blocked it right into his glove. That you could try that a hundred times, you couldn't do that again, but he nailed it there. Langford will be a top five pick in the draft this year, and another great effort, but this time the runner great takes break. off and Curlin read it beautifully. He's in scoring position with nobody out. Gotta take the free ones. This isn't a Florida team that steals a lot of bases, but you do have to be prepared for the ball in the dirt, Kate Curlin. Well done right there, reading the trajectory of that baseball and being aggressive, moving into scoring position for the Gators. Yeah, and because Langford is such a good hitter and a good fastball hitter, that's what's led to the last two pitches. The impact of Langford at that plate has curled it in scoring position. Michael and Maria, his mom and dad, got the camera going, got the mental camera going. Something down the right field line, which requires an umpire to go out there and move it. Florida off a game in which they scored 24, and you can see how they did with men in scoring position and men on, and he will not chase that. That's a big time take right there because you think after a couple breaking balls in the dirt that maybe you're getting a fastball but with first base open wouldn't surprise me if they continue to nibble to Langford. He hung one that ball is ripped down the line and left is it enough. Yes it is. Wow. Wyatt Langford is scolding hot. It's two nothing Gators. A World Series, Wyatt Langford, his third home run at Omaha. He is now six for his last six with two homers and eight ribbies, and that's a hanging breaking ball. And it is a yeah, pointed fair, Wyatt. Pointed fair for the folks. A bomb to left field, and the Gators just keep it rolling. Can you imagine a team ever being hotter than Florida is right now? Certainly not an individual. Boy, is Wyatt Langford having an amazing World Series. And here's Caglione, and that breaking pitch misses. So heard early trouble. Gators 24 runs yesterday and two here in the first. Still nobody out. Caglione got him up in the wind yesterday and left the building. A fastball there with some good movement on it. One and one.
Two home runs Sunday for the pitcher and three hole hitter. <laughs> Went down the middle of the plate. He missed that one. You look at the swing and miss. And where Thatcher Hurd gets it, he gets it up in the zone. He actually gets it in the middle of the zone, too. That fastball has that much carry that guys just have a hard time squaring it up. Yeah, he went and elevated again, and that's a punch out of Jack Caglione. You saw Griffin Herring starting to get a little loose out there in the bullpen. I mean, the leash is going to be very short for all the pitchers tonight. When I asked Kevin O'Sullivan about Jack Caglione's leash, he said, well, he determines that. I don't bring a leash to the ballpark. The pitcher <laughs> tells me how long my leash is going to be. And now the shortstop, Josh Rivera. Outside. Going hard, but he missed. 6 2, 215, Avon Park, Florida, 6 to 24, 250 batting average. He's got a couple of homers and a double. Red hot Wyatt Langford the center fielder has given Florida two nothing lead and the one one hasn't been able to land his breaking pitch and the one that he did hang was banged out of the ballpark the one that that he did land yeah. <laughs> took a while for it to land again that's right. But you're looking at the swings that he's getting against the fastball. They have to be second guessing the pitch selection there to Langford on sure. a three two count after they had thrown him three in a row. They went back to the well one more time. And, well, he looked right on time for that breaking ball. Well, he chased one that was way out of the zone and Morgan came off the bag. He's going to be safe. Boy, that was an interesting play by Trey Morgan, who seemed to think he was going to have to go get that baseball when it was right to Thatcher Hurd. Oh, they call him out at first base. Wow. He run into the baseline. He by running out of the and I can hear him say to the coach, he here's, here's the problem with this rule, okay? The entire base is in fair territory. The entire base. So when you get close to first base, where are you supposed to go? You got 45 feet, and then at that point, you're supposed to be in foul territory. Oh, man. I'm sorry, but I... he hit the middle of the bag. And he was safe anyway, by the way. He, 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 he had beat that throw, and I'm with you. Uh, he's in the middle of the base. Yes. I mean, you, it's, it's physically impossible. It's not physically impossible, but it makes no sense. To run in foul territory for the second 45 feet and then hit first base with your left foot. That's the part of this. If, if you're 10 feet in front of the bag and this happens, I get it. But not right at the base. It's it's something that, that we got to look at with this rule because it's just not realistic. Billy Van Rapworth is the home plate umpire. And as he consults with all the other umps. The call in the field of out because of runner's lane violation is being challenged by Florida. The play is under review. Yeah. And you make a very good point. And the other part of this is ultimately when they look at it, it, it didn't. The only thing that was impacted was Morgan's ability to catch the ball. But he may have put himself out of position. Watch his first move here. Yeah, he goes towards the ball. Then he comes back to the base. And by the time Hurd gives it up, Rivera is actually going to be safe. He doesn't touch the ball. He doesn't touch the glove. Obviously, he's he's out of the runner's lane. He's out of the runner's lane. Now he's back on the line. His last step, he's on the line. Yeah, that, the, that's a no call for me. I think you're right, Ravi. If Trey Morgan goes right to the base initially, yeah. he's in a better position. Third gives him that ball easier or quicker, and that's an out. 
And we're, we're probably the not final, having this discussion. Foul, they lose one. Correct. After review, the call in the field is confirmed. The runner is out. It's a runner's lane violation. Florida is charged with one challenge. It's a bad rule. And, and I'm okay if you do it for, say, the 45-foot line until 10 feet before first base. But at that point, if, if you are on the line running to a base that is entirely in fair territory, I don't know what else you want somebody to do. It, it's interpreted the right way in this case, yeah. probably. Yeah, I don't. Um, I mean, it's 50-50. It's I just don't like the rule. Batter runner advancing to first base. He is required to run in foul territory. And in the event that the runner physically interferes oh, with the ability of the play to be made, they will call interference. Again, there was a variety of things that led to the inability of them to make the play. I would think that the runner part of it was a very small one, if any. In any event, it's an out, and there are two down. Outside. B.T. Ryapel has struck out 11 times. He's also gone deep three times. And he's ahead 2-0 on Hurd. And this ball is popped up and playable. Cruz is the guy who's coming in from center field, and he's under it, and he'll make the play. Very typical of this World Series, a whole bunch of things going on, including something we have now seen three times. Wyatt Langford. He's pointing, mom and dad are rolling fingers. We're touching them all. And it's two zip through one. Now the Tigers and their faithful are gonna to have to rally out of a hole against Caglione. It'll be Gavin Dugas, Braden Jobert, and Jordan Thompson, the shortstop. Caglione drilled Beloso, he ends it with okay. a couple of punch outs and the count is correct. It's 2 and 0. They called a, a time violation on Caglione. So a ball was given and now it's 2 and 0 to Dugas. Who's left the yard twice. All three. And it's 3 and 0. Pitch clock starts at 20. When it gets below 12, you'll see it on your screen and that's a that's a three pitch walk, but it's a walk because of the violation. For the second straight inning, the leadoff man is aboard. And Braden Jobert will come up. He's the right fielder. After that, it's Thompson and Pearson who are combined three for 52. not be surprised here if Joe Bear takes to at least a strike. The, the lefties, Morgan saw one strike, even though he ended up striking out. Beloso wore one right in the middle of his back. That's a ball one there. What? When KP has a pitcher, it seems like when he's throwing 98, 99, the control isn't there. And as soon as he comes into the mid 90s, it's just a, a much better control. 96 at the knees still works. Sure. <laughs> That one gets by, and that's going to send Dugas down to second base. I guess that one will go as a wild pitch, but that, that's a play I think BT Ryapel expects himself to make. Looked like he just assumed he could pick that one right there and ends up giving up a free 90 to Gavin Dugas. Ryapel has done this a handful of times during this College World Series. He is a terrific communicator and leader, as all catchers tend to be, but this guy has been able to recognize the moment. Yeah, he's different. This 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 kid is as much of a coach as just about anybody the Gators have on their actual coaching staff. He he does a fantastic job of trying to control the heartbeat of this pitching staff, especially Caglione, who he has to work through a, a lot of early game jitters with. So Ryan Pell out of Marietta, Georgia, goes back behind the dish. Two balls, one strike. Dugas at second. Next one to Joe Barron. He challenges him up top at 97 and got him. Two and two. Ryan 
Frankfurt is shaded towards left. Right center is open, and he yanked that. Three balls, two strikes. The other way, off the glove, it looked like a falter in a left field. Joe Bear will be held at third base. And a good hard hit the other way from Joe Bear, and it is first and third, nobody out. Well, that was pretty right there. Kim Mulkey digging that swing. A rocket to the backside of the field for Braden Joe Bear, who has struggled here of late, but hit a homer in his last at bat yesterday, and that is about as pretty as it gets right there. Opponents hitting just 170 against Jack Caglione's fastball. That's how you keep your nose down and use the backside of the field. And here come the Tigers right back at him. What an opportunity here for Jordan Thompson. He's got everybody behind him now. It's been a struggle for him, both offensively and in the field, and what a great moment. An opportunity for Thompson, the shortstop. First pitch changeup. That's pretty cool. I mean, you got LSU fans on their feet right now, and they know how important Jordan Thompson's been to this team all year, and they know how much he struggled since he's come here to Omaha. But one night can change all that. Back-to-back well, -back changeups, and ahead of that, 0 and 2. Walter had been even with the bag, and now they play him straight up. Dugas at third, Joe Bear at first, and he delivers Jordan Thompson. His second hit in Omaha, it plates Dugas, and listen to the crowd in a 2-1 game. He had been one for 30. Every RBI feels good, Ravi, but that one is extra special for the okay. Tiger shortstop. I mean, an 0-2 count with the run 90 feet away, and he hits a rocket into left to get the Tigers on the board. And the threat continues first and second. Pearson, the left fielder. He squares, pulls what? it back, and that's a 96 on the corner for a strike. Now, this is interesting here, right? Because Caglione is an exceptional fielder. So if you're Pearson, you really need to get this ball to third base and try to make Halter come in and field it. Oh, and two. Pearson made a tremendous catch against Florida in left field on a ball that was smoked to keep his team in it. And they ultimately won that game. It was a game saving catch. Now 0 and 2. Like Thompson, Pearson has had a hard time here in Omaha. Just two hits, 22 at bats. On the ground. Fielded will go to second for one. Back to first. Nobody's there. So they get the runner heading to second base in Thompson. Joe Bear goes to third. Pearson aboard. Nice job there by the freshman Luke Heyman. That was not an easy play. Heyman doesn't play a ton of first base. Only when Caglione pitches. And that was a tough hop. But he did a nice job of keeping his poise and ripping a strike to Josh Rivera to keep the double play in order and eliminate a runner from scoring position. You're LSU, you take that trade right there. I mean, if, if you can push somebody up 90 feet, and I know he squared the bunt early, I don't know if he was bunting or if he was taken, but left on left with Pearson. Still did his job to get Joe Bear to third base. Let's see if the Tigers go safety squeeze here. With Alex Malazzo. They tried it, and he fouled it into the mitt for strike one. A perfect pitch to the fastball right down the middle. And you're always trying to hit the top of the ball when you bunt. He just 
really came right over the top of that one. Seven sacrifices, the most on this team, and he tries again. Oh, good catch that time by Wyapel. Kind of stabbed at it and was able to land it. Inside. Get back. But Luke Heyman's coming downhill the way Trey Morgan did the other day against Wake Forest. He is he is flying down the first baseline. That one just inside from Malazzo. Interesting that he's so far back in the box. Usually when back foot's off the box. Yeah, usually when you're bunny, I know this guy's throwing hard, but usually when you're bunny, you want to get yourself all the way to the front of the box, give yourself more fair territory to work with. Kate Beloso not feeling Cruz is on deck. Beloso inserted into the one spot in the lineup. Kevin O'Sullivan talks into the walkie talkie, sends the pitch call to his catcher. And a free one. And Beloso fouled it off to the right. Runner goes, that's way high, ball four, and that will load the bases. Not close on the 3-2 pitch. And the arms start to head out to Florida's bullpen. Kevin O'Sullivan starts to head to the mound. See Blake Purnell headed out there, Cade Fisher, Ryan Slater. Picarado's gone out there. Yeah. It was so good yesterday. I'd be surprised if we see him again in this one, but he was fantastic yesterday. One of the biggest challenges with Caglione is it can be so good and then it can go sideways so quick. And this is not a night where you can afford to have a lot of patience mm -mm. with things like that. That's why you see that activity or at least movement down in the Gator bullpen already. And they got plenty of options. From a bullpen standpoint, Florida's bullpen should be ready to go, but there isn't anybody that is an option that has the stuff of the guy on the mound. He's just got to corral it. So, a two way player, a superstar who has been constantly asked about his own aspirations and dreams, and has talked about the fact that he's got another year of this. What he's interested in is helping his guys who are going to leave get a championship. They're loaded for Beloso, who's had a terrific series. He got drilled in the back his first time up and looks at a slider for a strike one. Yeah, he's throwing a little tighter cutter. We've seen yeah. a few of those. I like that one. one. Yeah. Six RBIs for Cade Beloso. Here in Omaha, oh. that's down. Joe Bear is at third base. You got Josh Pearson at second base and Milazzo the catcher at first base in a 2 1 ball game with one out. They've got one in the inning. And the uh, Gators did not go out to the bullpen to just sit around and watch. There's double barreled action going right now. time has been hit that brings in a run and this game is tied looks like it got him right on that forearm and Beloso is at first base for the second time that's miserable hit on the inside of his left elbow fastball just oh look no it's his wrist wrist off his chest May not have been exactly the way that Jay Johnson thought putting Beloso in the leadoff spot would work. Maybe it was. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, he's been on base both times, and that one drives in another one to tie this one up. And now you have the double threat of Cruz and Tommy White. And the 
game seems to be speeding up right now for Jack Caglione on the mound. You better be careful right here. Cruz just missed one his first at bat. See, I like that one. I like leaning on that one. He throws his changeup for a strike much more comfortably than he does any other pitch. And against righties, it's absolutely his best pitch. Balls in a strike, and the misses have been have been bad. But you can see he's missed arm side most of the game, especially with his heater. Thirty pitches have been thrown this inning. And he misses arm side again, and this is a brutal spot for Caglione and the Gators with Dylan Cruz up in a hitter's count. Honestly, right here, a walk's better than grooving one. It's not the end of the world to give up one. LSU takes the lead on the walk, and Kevin Sullivan has likely seen enough from Jack Caglione on the mound. But the Tigers up 3-2. Well, Kyle, that was the concern you voiced at the top. When it's right, it's outstanding. When it's wrong, it's sideways. And this inning, a walk. It was a wild pitch. A couple of singles, a sacrifice, a walk, a hit batter, and another walk. We're back in Omaha and a sticky situation for Florida. LSU's got the bases loaded. Caglione out of the game. He will he will stay in as the DH. He will not go in to play first base. Then they'd lose their designated hitter. So he is responsible for the guys that are on base. 46 pitches, just an inning and a third. And he turns it over to the lefty, Cade Fisher. The last pitched against LSU went three and a third. He allowed four hits, gave up one run. It was earned. And there was a home run hit in that game off Cade Fisher. But Tommy White on a two strike slider that tied the game up and this is where the Gators led three to two and Kate Fisher trying to spike a back foot breaking ball doesn't get it there and Tommy White launches it into the left field seats that tied it at three eventually Kate Beloso would be the hero in the 11th and now Tommy White gets another chance this time with some runners on. So you have three runners on and one of the most dangerous hitters in Omaha at the plate is Tommy White transfer named Tommy Tanks about to be a hero again. Oh he looked at that first one and liked it and fouled it back. How about the confidence in Fisher for Kevin O'Sullivan and the last time he was out there this guy hit him in the seats. Now we're going to bring freshmen in in this situation when you got the bases loaded and one out in the second inning game three of the finals. One ball and a strike from Fisher. 6'4, 215 out of Dalton, Georgia. And a 1 1. That's way outside. Two balls and a strike, and no advancement, and they got away from Ryapel. The ground and it is a foul ball. Foul ball, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. Wasn't foul by much. Foul ball. It's David Savage, our third base umpire down there. We do have umpires down the line too and left and right. Needed them yesterday on some of those high fly home runs that ended up scraping the clouds and somehow getting over the fair pole down the left field line. I heard you refer to it as a fair pole, so that's Thank why you. I went there. See where you're going there. It's like a fair pull and a foul bag, right? That's, that's, that's the that'd chance. be that'd be a good combination. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Couple of deep breaths from the freshman Fisher, who has come on in a bases loaded situation. Second inning, LSU up by a run with them loaded. 
Now the count goes full again. You gotta, you gotta shove it in there against Tommy White. He's just so good on the ball away. We go again. He hits it hard. That's in the hole. That's good. That brings in Pearson. Milazzo puts the brakes on. White's got a six RBI. And the LSU Tigers lead it by two. It is hard to get one past Tommy White. He was trying to. Yep. And honestly, he did it. And that, that's on the inner third of the plate for sure. Got in on his hands a little, but not a ton. It was 100 off the bat for Tommy White. Elevated enough. It was a little bit easier for him to get to it. That's his 103rd run driven in this year. Trey Morgan to the seats down the third baseline. Foul ball. 103 runs batted in in a college season for Tommy White. He set a freshman home run record at NC State. Fisher working quickly, and he gets Morgan to swing and miss at that. Four runs here in the inning. Caglione watching as the starter's been replaced. Morgan does a terrific job of spoiling that one. That started probably behind him. Yeah, he, you see him choking up on that bat. He's going to get into a broad base, and this dude can grind out an A-B with the best of them. 0-2. He delivers to center field. Langford is there. He'll make the play. Should be an easy tag for Beloso, and also moving up from second is Molasso. 5-2. Tigers on the sack from Trey Morgan. So it's Dylan Cruz at third base. And the job was done there. Another RBI. And anytime you can add a run, man, it is huge. And the whole Paul Skeens thing still looming large over this now that LSU has grabbed a lead. Gavin Dugas. On Paul Skeen's watch down here in the LSU dugout, he is not down here and he has not been down here for the last 30 minutes. Oh. Hey. Okay. What, do you think, what do you think we got there, KP? You probably have a cereal or something. <laughs> Two strikes on Dugas. Spoiled one. Good at bats from LSU here. Caglione held him out a lot. But White got around on a ball that was deep. And it's very, very good speed at third base on a ball that's anywhere, even on the infield. Here's one on the infield, and that's going to be an infield hit. It rolls through to the outfield. Another run comes in. Dugas, a two out, two strike RBI. 6 2 Tigers. Tigers have made this inning pay off, right? As you said, Ravi got gifted a ton of free passes, but the situational hitting has been fantastic. White, sack fly from Trey Morgan. Now Dugas reaches out and rolls one through the six hole, and a six spot here in the second by the Tigers. Outside. Ball one to Braden Gilbert. Well, anybody that was worried about the hangover of a 24 to 4 thrashing, like that's now been flushed. That's ripped. That's into right field. Fielder has it. We'll put the brakes on. Wow, they throw back to third base. I thought White had a chance to score on that. As Evans picked it up, they held. I don't know. White at third. I don't know how you hold him right there. I know it's hit hard, but. Evans had to go to his glove side. Ty Evans was not even throwing this ball. No. I mean, he had conceded the run in right field. And with two outs, it, that's shocking that White was held. 
Yeah, he was going to score without a play. Yeah. As you said, Ty Evans is not even attempting to throw Tommy White out at home. And nice job there by obeying your third base coach and putting the brakes on. But well, that's a missed chance there by the Tigers. They're loaded one more time. Thompson. And Jordan Thompson, who delivered a single and an RBI in this inning, his second hit in Omaha. It was a big one. Do even more damage now. It's 2 and 0. Oh. It feels like it's moving real quick right now for Florida. Everything about it. And Fisher's tempo is contributing to it. They just got to figure out a way to get off the field. 2 0 to Thompson, right down the middle. 2 and 1. They're going to throw some punches on offense oh, yeah. themselves. They just got to get out of this thing. Ball is hit to center field and it is fairly deep, but Langford is under it. And Thompson flies out, but they end up with six. Five hits in the inning and a bunch of two strike, two out magic for Skeens, White, and the Tigers. They lead by four. Huge inning for the LSU Tigers. They knock Caglione out of the game and they put up a Six spot in the top of the second. A couple of minutes ago, we sent our cameras down below, and uh, that's the body of Paul Skeens. Hey now, he's got no socks. Uh, he's got no, he's got no shoes on those feet, so he's throwing down some. He's making a change. It appears. He's got the AirPods in. Like it looks like he's yeah. in his pregame routine there, not eating cereal. KP. No, I just. <laughs> Lucky charms and onto the pregame routine. Here's Luke Heyman now as Florida has to chip away at a four run deficit. Heyman, Evans, helmet against Thatcher Hurd. All right, 2 0. Oh. Looks like Riley Cooper and a bunch of other guys walked out to that LSU Tiger bullpen. Skeens obviously hasn't, but they got Herring, they got Griffin. Cooper's been a revelation here in Omaha. 2 0. Oh. Right. Uncan shows that as a strike. Luke Heyman wasn't too thrilled with that call. Three twenty one on the year. Twelve home runs for Heyman. That's been the pitch. That's been the Florida kryptonite where he wants to live. And if he's getting the high strike called then obviously that makes Hurd's night even better. Get breaking pitch. Second strikeout. Ty Evans got to the College World Series with four homers. You know how many homers he has here? His four. four. And this is the six homers the Gators hit yesterday. A couple of them obviously off the screen. Now this is for the week. 15 homers in the College World Series. The most in Charles Schwab field history. Fireworks. You get fireworks. You get 15 right. home runs. You get fireworks. You, deserve, you deserve fireworks. Yeah. Right by him at 95. This is Evans, the right fielder. And I'll tell you one thing you get a six run bump, all of a sudden, Thatcher Hurd's got a little adrenaline working. Thatcher Hurd wanted to be a catcher when he started his baseball life. He was really after Arizona Cesar Salazar. That's who he wanted to model himself after. On a one-two, he pulled it and he wanted to play for Jay Johnson. He went to an Arizona camp one summer with his buddy Tommy Splain. Hurd wasn't great at the camp. Splain did did much better. They both wanted to be two-way players, but Johnson remembers seeing Hurd throw a slider and said, "You know what? That guy right there, he's not a catcher. He's going to be a pitcher." Lo and behold, Johnson ends up at LSU, and here is Hurd. And this is a sky high pop up. Pearson in left, and Thompson going out. Thompson's under it, and he makes the play. It 
It's not something I would assume, guys, that Paul Skeens would do if he was not thinking about being used tonight. No. No. He'd be on his in his uh, turfs cheering on his the fellows. But right now he's in in pregame mode. There's no doubt about it. That's a dude getting ready to grab the rock. Tyler Shelnut. Yep, that's a good pitch in there for a strike. During COVID, Thatcher and his brother Logan, another pitcher, they got the keys to a pitching facility with all the technology, track man, et cetera. And that really is what hooked him on pitching. And he, right now, looks like somebody who's teaching a master class. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the carry on his fastball is among the top 5% in all of college baseball, and he has really learned how to utilize it and just live right at the top of the zone. 0 oh, 2. And he does not get the chase. He's one strike away from throwing a shutdown inning out there, which is what every pitcher wants to do after their team puts up a crooked number. Six for the Tigers to start this inning. Three up, three down. Would give them all the momentum. Hundred. Mission accomplished. A wicked curveball from Thatcher Hurd. Picks up two punches in the inning. He's got three in the game. We're through two, and the Tigers got a four-run lead. 2009, that of course is the last LSU title, Paul Maneri and company. As he followed in Skip Bertman's shoes, he was able to get one. The Gators came in 2017, and we saw Kowar and Singer, and there is Paul Maneri being asked, among other things, what it's like to win the whole thing. No one's ever won it in their second year, and that's what Johnson's trying to do in the first pitch swing, and this one is going to be playable. In foul territory, not an easy catch at all, but the catch is made by Colby Halter. And that's a one pitch out for Pearson. And that's kind of big right there for Fisher on the mound. Wow, after the last half inning? Yeah. That's exactly what the freshman left hander was hoping for right there. An easy, low maintenance out. Strike one to Malazzo. Outside. What Florida has going for it, too, off of that big 24 to 4 run. That one misses high. Seven of the last 10 teams that forced a game three, including the last five, won game three. So there is something to the win of game two, follow it up in game all three, right. as that's in there, to even it up at two and two. Oh, and they had all the momentum, right? Slugger hits a two-run homer in the first, but so many free passes to start the second. Oh. Just missed up on a breaking pitch to go full three-two. And then it is back to the top of the order for the third time. Fisher lost him. Where free passes really hurt you. They've given away too many and hit batters. And now you're dealing with Beloso and Cruz again. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. Yeah, the six runs that scored in that second inning. Four of them were free passes. Three walks and Beloso was hitting the wrist. And a big theme of the first two games, even though LSU split in those first two games, was LSU's inability to come up with some big hits. But starting with Jordan Thompson and Tommy White, Gavin Dugas, they were able to come up with some clutch RBI-based knocks in the second. Below so, that is just foul. Under the glove of the diving Heyman, the foul. You're playing with fire, you, you let this LSU team have too many base runners. That one was just foul. Also going to get through a bat without getting punked. Strikes out.
Slider's good, especially against lefties. And that's what Kate Fisher was kind of leaning on that at bat against Beloso. Goes right back to it. You can see the dot on that slider coming in. Beloso all the way out in front. Strikes out for the second out of the inning. And now the very dangerous Dylan Cruz. And that slider, Berkey, is a little different. That ball got thrown over his head. It was backed up there by Curlin, but that slider against right is a little different than against lefties. Well, he's got to get it in there, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, from lefties, you got the conviction to throw it because it's going away from their body, right? It's right-handers. Sometimes it's hard to throw it with that much sweep because you're afraid to hit them. And so far, he's tried to go in twice to Dylan Cruz with fastballs, and he's missed to his arm side, which is to the outside part of the plate with both of them. Oh. Cruz popped out to right to the warning track, then walked and scored on a 2-1. That ball is ripped into right field. It's going to get down in front of Evans. He fires it back in, but that's the beauty of Dylan Cruz. He and Tommy White are amongst the best in the country at going the other way with some authority. you got to get the ball in. Look where Rypel set up, right? You, he's set up in, and that ball's just hanging out over the plate, 107-mile-an-hour BB into right field. And honestly, he's lucky he got that one back because that is right in the go zone for Dylan Cruz. In some regards, fortunate it's just a single. Kevin O'Sullivan sees White coming up. That bullpen door is open. And the lefty Fisher. Night is over. Slater coming in third pitcher of the game for the Gators. There's two men on. There's two men down. Florida trying to keep it a four run deficit. So Caglione lasted one in the third. Gave up two hits. Six earned runs. Fisher came on. He lasted one and a third. Four hits, but not charged with any runs. Yeah, I think if you had bases empty, Tommy White's coming up, you probably leave Fisher in. But uh, he hadn't had good luck against Tommy White the last few games, so they'll go to the right hander right here. Ryan Slater on. It's a low to mid 90s fastball. Slider's his best pitch. And against right handers, he actually throws a slider more. Then he does his fastball. Florida's going to need some length out of somebody in that bullpen if they're going to have a chance. And it starts right here with Slay. Look at White's numbers tonight one for two, an OPS of 11.50. Struck out, singled. This will be the third different pitcher he has seen in three innings. And you can just tell by his body language, he is absolutely feeling it. Saw it after the single and little Selly at first base. He goes the other way, but he can hook a ball down the line with anybody. 103 and three runs batted in on the year. 0 oh and one and a take. One and one. Well, what's scary pitching to him is, is even though he comes out of his shoes, he's trying to hit it over the right center field wall with that heater, right? So most guys that come out of their shoes like that, you think, well, I'll just throw him a breaking ball. But Slater knows if he hangs it, he'll hit it in the left field bullpen. I mean, you know hitters, KP, you know hitters. You can tell when they swing and foul one off and they, they give you a little walk, like they, uh -huh. yeah. they're they feeling like, I missed that. You didn't get that by me. I missed it. Now, there aren't too many times when Tommy White steps to the plate, he's not feeling confident <laughs> either. One, two from Slater and uh, Chase. Well, it's so fun about where we're at right now in this ballgame is we have superstar players and most of them are feeling locked in right now, right? right? Langford, Cruz, White, like these dudes are special and they're hot. Yeah, that came into his wheelhouse. He yanked a foul, and that's just going to be a long run for the ball boy. That didn't oh, get the ball. That's coming the lid. Yeah, fans weren't able to get it to help him out. Well, 
And out is Liv. Doesn't know it. Yep. Hats off. Shaking up. Oh, She's oh, kind of shaking up after that. Nope. Oh, nope. Hold on. Back for a hat. We're, we're going to play. Three and two. There he goes. Sweet headband, though. Keens Cruises with the headband. 24 home runs on the year for White. With two strikes, he'll even spread his legs out a little further to get that base planted. And he wanted another chance because that was ball four. One thing White will do that you don't see Cruz do a ton is he'll leave the strike zone. He he's got such incredible desire to drive in runs and sometimes that leads to chasing pitches out of the zone the bat to ball skills though to foul that one off was impressive Hit a walk off to break a scoreless tie in the World Series that was the first one we've had now the three two another one that he fouls off the other nutty number about white which we've talked about in games past when Cruz gets on base he has been hitting over 680. Like that doesn't make sense, but somehow when that guy is on first, Tommy White's batting average goes above 680. <laughs> that really is the craziest stat. And this isn't like a small sample size. No, no, because he's played the entire year and cruises on base a lot. That's one of the more odd numbers I've ever seen in baseball. So if you end up drafting Cruz, do you then eventually have to go find Tommy <laughs> <Yes>. White? <laughs> Slater on in relief, and here's another 3-2. And off the end of the bat, a one-hopper. And Rivera gets it. We'll talk with the LSU head coach, Jay Johnson. Probably ask him about the plans for Paul Skeens and what it's like to lead by four. Yeah, just the quality of that bats uh, did a nice job with Caglione and uh, made a good adjustment to Fisher. Now we're going to have to do that to Slater and really like what I'm seeing out of Thatcher so far. He's been really good. Ha Thatcher has since coming to Omaha. What's been the difference with him here? You know, he's had a really good season outside of a couple outings. I think he's throwing his breaking ball first strike. He's locating his fastball and the poise is uh, really good and that's what we need tonight. We've seen Paul Skeens go back and start to stretch. What's the game plan for him tonight? He'll probably be in this game at some point. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, KB. So you're here at, at some point, and I'm sure the scoreboard will dictate it. Skeens is going to come in and win, right? Well, I don't know because because we can't we can't go to the camera anymore. <laughs> Why not? It's uh, it's covered now. There, there's there's a towel over the <laughs> the peekaboo camera that was down there somewhere. I'm sure unintentional. Just hanged it. Just hung it there. Yeah. Just Trying to dry it out. All right. Well, that high fastball has worked so far for Thatcher Hurd. It'll be nine, then one and two. Kobe Halter. And they have done what they usually do defensively. They take Jordan Thompson, the shortstop, move him over to the second base spot. And Dugas moves over to the shortstop hole. Oh. Seen that follow through from a few pitchers at the major league level, too, that Hurd has where that right leg really kicks. Mm -hmm. Venture Strider is a oh, yeah. big proponent of it with the Atlanta Braves. Uh, I think, I mean, when I was growing up, you heard so many pitching coaches say you want to land in a fielding position, and that, that's great. But you, you want to make the pitch. That's the part that matters the most. And, and if you could do that, maximize your effort and land in a fielding position, then that's wonderful. But if you crisscross your legs and come across but you're throwing 95 at the top of the zone and they don't hit it that's better than making sure that we land in a good fielding position Alter Curland and then Langford and this one is driven to left center field Cruz is going back he's still going back Leaps at the wall and makes the play oh what a catch by Dylan Cruz at the wall That's how you win a Golden Spikes Award, and it is largely considered the number one overall pick in the country. Tip your cap, because this is as good as it gets. This dude looks at the wall, then he peeks one more time. Now finish the playoff, kid. 
What a play by Dylan Cruz. The confidence to take your eye off the baseball just so you know exactly where you are. Then the fearlessness and athleticism to finish it off. That is a Golden Spikes play right there. This one is also playable. There'll be no wall involved. Cruz is coming in. He's just catching everything from deep in center field. I'm not even sure he was set in center field when that pitch was thrown, but he saw it and he got that one too. How far are those two plays apart? You think it, 200 feet, 150 feet? I mean, we, we catch it at the base of the wall and now go on a dead sprint coming in and catch it in the shadows. My oh, man needs a breather. Yeah, we, we <laughs> somebody need, call somebody a 30 call 20 right out. now. He, uh, he's getting his cardio in right there. He's like, come on, Gavin, I need you to finish that one for me. Well, that first play basically assured that Langford would be up with at the most one on, let alone two. And that's a big, big out and a big second out. So Langford bats with nobody on. And this guy has got flames coming off of his shirt right now, the way he's hitting six for his last six. Three home runs. And as comfortable as White looks, so does Langford at the plate. This dude's pretty scary when he's locked in and, and right now he is as hot as you can be. You just have to be very careful with every pitch. Yep. Three four hundred foot homers in a single World Series. He's the first. This ballpark just generally doesn't see balls go where he outside, hit them. And that's outside, so he'll walk. Good story about Langford. When he was a kid, he was nicknamed Evil Knievel. He fractured his right wrist playing basketball, went for x rays. They found out that he had a healing fracture in his left wrist. Healing fracture. Never complained about it. So he <laughs> had a broken left wrist, never complained about it, and dealt with a right wrist. Grew up about 30 miles outside of Gainesville, Florida. Lives for the Gators. He's at first. Boy, Caglione just went fishing on a slider, 0 and 1. Well, it's been pretty neat. The, the story coming into the College World Series, we had all these superstars, and Langford and Cruz have certainly yeah. not disappointed. Could be one, and, and Skeens either, right? The right. 1, 2, 3 in the draft, they have put on a show for us here in Omaha. Outside. That play Dylan Cruz just made. Anybody that thinks he's a question mark, is, I don't know how you ever would consider moving him anywhere off of center field. He is special out there. Caglione has the BB Corps bat record for a collegiate player. He's got 33 home runs, and the crowd could sense, especially those behind home plate, what a great pitch that breaking ball was. They called that strike before Billy Van Rapphorst did. Now one and two. They've been able to get him to chase. Oh, he got hit, and that's a mistake from Thatcher Hurd. Came inside to Caglione, and now there are two on with two down, and Josh Rivera coming up. Hurd looked so good in this at bat earlier, too, and then this time just tugged a fastball. That, that's kind of where his miss has been with that fastball. He mm -hmm. tugs it all the way too far to the glove side. Now you got a guy stepping in, uh, stepping up, and Josh Rivera that's hit 19 out this year. If he does that again, we got a one-run game. And that's going to bring Jay Johnson out to the mound and talk with Thatcher Hurd. Here's Griffin Herring. And how about the bullpen work, guys? You've seen LSU all year. How about the bullpen work for LSU in the tournament, and in particular here? Well, you, you, you got to take yesterday and throw it throw away, it away yeah. right? Other than that, they've been spectacular, and Griffin Herring. Riley Cooper certainly at the top of that list. Herring just a freshman, but boy, is he impressed. And Riley Cooper under the weather yesterday, but looks like he's ready to answer the bell here this evening. And I would say that Thatcher Hurd is in that in that place right now where if it if it doesn't get done right here, they they may go to Herring. He's been that good. Only the bottom of the third inning with all the fireworks and the walks and the mound visits. And this guy right here, Josh Rivera, the shortstop, can really change the complexion of the game. In 
there for strike one. Talk about Langford who's bouncing around at second base. His speed is even a touch better than Skeens. So he can fly. Caglione at first. Kind of 1 1 on the way to Rivera. Hey! Got the call. Late break. How about the late action on Hurd's breaking pitch, and it's now 1 and 2. On that arm side, too. A lot of times you see that late action if you're throwing it to the glove side. It's easier to get over the top of it. But that is a real breaking ball, whatever side of the plate it's on. Punches out his fourth of the night. And he got some help in this inning from Dylan Cruz in center field. And about face, Wallbanger. And he turned, sprinted, found it again. And then he came in about 90 yards to make that play. It's all Dylan Cruz and LSU right now. Well, Cruz and Hurd helped prevent any runs from coming in. So it's 6-2 as we start the fourth. And Wicked slash at it from Trey Morgan. And that one's going to get out of play as well. Stating the obvious, but this is obviously the, the game you win, you win the championship. And the arms that LSU has out there, the longer you don't put some numbers on the board, the advantage really tips to the Tigers. Oh. Yeah, this one could get late early on the Gators. And they, opportunity right there with your cleanup hitter up and two guys on. Rivera watches a couple fastballs. That one stings. This one is kicked right to first, and that will work out beautifully. And let's, let's make sure that he's okay. Look, I got him off the bottom, maybe of the cleat, and it rolled right over to Luke Heyman at first. That's a big break. He's limping a little bit. I mean, I think that got him a little bit. That was moving when it got there. That's for sure. Hey, Kick saving a beauty with the back one. 106 off your ankle. Easier to smile after. To three unassisted on the back end of it, but that one's got to sting. Slater takes a step off the rubber as he gets ready to deal with Dugas and then Joe Bear. What? Dugas has reached twice, walk and a single. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get a trainer out there, don't you? This is not what the Gators need here. He's going to need, if he's going to be able to stay in, he's going to need some practice throws after that. I mean, that, that's your drive leg, KP. Yeah. I thought the way that it came off, I thought maybe it got him at the bottom of, of his cleat. This is just trying to set his feet and push. Yeah, he just had no push. It, like, gave out on him. Oh, it's like it's like up around the shin. Yeah, I, I we saw it real speed. I thought it came off his shoe at the bottom. Ooh. It came off so hard, you almost figured that couldn't have hit a, a body part. You're gonna try to yeah. throw a few. I mean, seriously, it felt and it sound was Rolled like all the way like, to first base. Yeah, they've already had Caglione and Fisher, so Slater's their third arm. And has been Purnell start to throw.
Kevin O'Sullivan, the athletic trainer, right out there with the home plate umpire. Well, it's funny. We just talked about that finishing position exactly. where, the, where the right leg rips around, right? And that's the body's to the side of the hitter. And not that you would catch that ball anyway. That's that's not the point. But it does expose the, that, yep. that outside of your right leg. And your gloves, you know, nowhere near in a position to make a play on that ball. Looks like he's okay, fortunately. He's ready to go, 1-0, and that one is a little bit high. Immediately you have that adrenaline rush, and then you realize, like, you know what? There's not a lot going on here with support. 2-0, and popped up. Should be playable for Heyman into foul territory. Two down. Think about LSU. They won on Saturday, but they stranded 17 runners. Sunday, remember, in the blowout, they left the bases loaded in the first yeah. and the second inning. Today, they've done a lot better job of cleaning up. So, Dugas retired for the first time. Another guy that hasn't been retired is Braden Jobert. Oh, nice dig. And on a team that has Cruz and White, when Joe Bear gets it going, he's as impressive to watch as any of them. And towards the end of the season, he started to have that happen. Swung right over that slider. One ball, one strike. Both down. That's the same pitch he swung at. Yeah, the bat to ball skills are not on the level of of Cruz and White, but when he sinks it all up, boy, it's as pretty as anybody. Hit. And this one is pulled down the line. He's running. It's going to get down. And off the wall, fielded by Evans, throw to second, diving in with a double. Braden Jobert. He's reached all three times tonight and delivering on a promise that he and his father made back in 2015. Speaking of sinking it all up, how about a hanging slider right there? That's what I'm talking about. Just a beautiful move through the zone, such extension through the front part of the zone and Evans did all that he possibly could here to keep that one to a single but Joe Bear just too athletic and he has now caught fire with three hits yep. already in this game to parlay after the homer to finish the last one that's four straight hits for Braden Joe Bear he and his dad Jacques were here in 15 watching so eight years ago and his dad said next time I promise you'll be here helping them win oh. a World Series and here they are in 23 and Joe Bear is certainly doing his part Jordan Thompson single and then hit a smash to center field. So he's made good time contact twice. Oh. Huge numbers with runners in scoring position. That one was right down the middle. That's a terrible hop over Halter and a huge break for the Tigers. That's the run scores. Joe Bears in down to second goes Thompson. And everything that went wrong for Thompson yesterday is going right for him today. It was do some hitters luck, right? I mean, this one's hit hard, don't get me wrong, but it, it's hit right at Coley Alter and it hits just in front of that lip and goes straight up. Expected a different hop, throw goals all the way home. You see right over his shoulder. And that was going to be a tough play anyway because how hard it was hit. But he took that hop. He didn't have a chance at it. Just shy of 100 miles an hour off the bat. Jordan Thompson heads up base running two. Sees that throw going home. Ends up at second base. And the lead grows to five. Seven two. Strike one to Josh Pearson. Give Thompson a hit. That's his second of the night. 
And Pearson swings at it and pulls it foul. This is where this lineup gets scary, right? It's been a struggle for the bottom four hitters in this lineup over the last few days, but where they are having some kind of ball game here this evening. Six for nine with runners in scoring position. It's only the fourth inning, and you can tell they are starting to starting to feel what tonight could end up like for the Tigers. Six through nine batters in LSU lineup have only made one out tonight. I mean that that's that's some pretty good production at the bottom half of the order. Incredible ball game. And Jordan Thompson, as you said, Ravi, was one for 30 coming into this one this week. One, two, this ball smacked to right field. It is over the wall. Josh Pearson blasts off. And the Tigers are putting it to the Gators. Two run shot for Pearson. It is nine to two. And for Josh Pearson, his fourth home run of the year. Incredible the way the bottom of this order has gotten it hot. A fastball down and out over the plate. And Josh Pearson, a 21 degree rocket into the right center field seats. And it is all Tigers right now. Also, that's another hit. The LSU Tigers, if you go from really from Dugas on down, you cannot get them out right now. And you wonder what impact that ball off of the right ankle of Slater has had because there have been some smashed baseballs since he was hurt and stayed in the game. Joe Bear three hits. Thompson two hits. Pearson a home run. Now Malazzo's been on base all three times. That's one, two, three. Seven runs out of your five, six, seven, eight, nine slots in the order. We're in the fourth. It's the beauty of baseball, man. You're only as good as your next day's starting pitcher or your next day's offense. They're up seven. They lost by 20 yesterday. LSU's Kim Mulkey in the LSU luxury suite. She knows she knows a thing or two about championships. She's wearing her son's jersey Kramer Robertson who of course was here in Omaha playing for the Tigers as a shortstop. That's a pretty good place to be right now with LSU 10 hits nine runs. Pitching lined up for days. And Tyler Nesbitt comes on the sophomore out of LaBelle Florida. His numbers and this has not gone the way that Kevin O'Sullivan would have scripted it. No, and, and we talked about it earlier. The Gators gonna have a chance in this thing. They gotta have somebody go out there and get them nine to twelve outs the rest of the way. You, you can't just keep piecing it together in short stints. Nesbitt now the next one. They're gonna see how long he can hang out there. Be careful for this guy. Here's Cade Beloso drilled twice and he struck out. Hey. 85 on our change up to start him. Thompson and Pearson began the game three for 52 here in Omaha. They're three for six with a homer and four RBIs tonight. You just never know. You never know. That's what makes this game so great. You never know. Jay Johnson was adamant about his confidence in Jordan Thompson last night. And boy, is the shortstop making his skipper look look good right now. Talked about how he believes in Jordan Thompson, how they wouldn't be here without Jordan Thompson, and a couple big hits here in this one for that young man. Yeah, LSU's hitters tonight, too, have really had a great game plan and the ability to recognize pitches. They have fouled off so many two strike pitches to stay alive, and they 
Do a great job of taking ones that are out of the zone with two outs, seven for ten. Oh. Yeah, and this whole thing started with two outs. Like they, they are just locked in right now as a lineup, and this is a perfect example of a K. Belosa. Oh, goodness. That's pretty good. That, that one's one. a strike. That one looked like it got some play. Three runs in the inning. And a 3-2 with a runner going, and this one is into right field. That's going to get down. Malazzo will head to third. They'll put the... He's being wound. Here's the throw. He is in there. The tenth one for the Tigers, and let's hope he's okay. It was an awkward, awkward step at home, and that foot hit the bag, and he's grabbing that ankle. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we want to see this one. Alex Malazzo just scored the 10th run of the game. No pressure on that left leg of his. He is being taken underneath. Well, he, of course, will be examined, x-rayed. And the crowd will once again settle down after giving him a standing ovation. So Beloso will pick up an RBI. It's an eight-run game. and. LSU is doing to Florida what Florida did to the Tigers yesterday. Here's Cruz. The ground, Rivera will go across the diamond, and that will do it as Cruz is retired. Six runs in the second, four runs in the fourth. What's going on inside the head of Kevin O'Sullivan? We'll find out when we come back. Some short outings by a few of your arms. How do you manage the bullpen going forward? Well, we're just going to try to have to put a couple zeros on the board. I mean, I think we had four walks and two hit by batters the first three innings, and obviously they capitalized on it. And then this inning, we had two outs to be on, and then I'm giving up four runs. So, bottom line is, we still got more than half the game left. We just got to chip away. Part of that is your what your hitters can do. You strung some hits together yesterday, a couple bombs. What adjustments do you want to see at the plate? Well, I mean, at some point, we, we were helped yesterday by some free passes as well and some and some defensive miscues on their end. But bottom line is we, when we get opportunities to score, we just got to chip chip away and get a run here, two runs there, and then, you know, get within, you know, striking distance at the end. I appreciate it. Thanks, Elliot. Right, thanks, Chris. All right, well, Thatcher Hurd now is pitching with an eight-run lead. And, of course, he's going to be throwing to a new catcher as we keep an eye on any updates on Alex Malazzo. Hayden Travinsky has gone in. We'll start with BT Ryapel. Florida is a team that makes a living hitting the ball over the wall. And when you're down eight, you've got to make sure there are base runners on and then hit it over the wall. Yeah, I mean, all you can do is exactly what Sully said, which is just chip away. I mean, you got to try to make it a 0-0 game and see if you can't put three or four together and give yourself a puncher's chance down the stretch. The problem is the back end of this bullpen looks a little different tonight than normal. Yeah. Well, the guy out there looks pretty good so far. Yeah. And Thatcher Hurd gave up the leadoff single to Curlin and Langford headed out of sight. Since then, he's been pretty locked in. They heard recognized he may have got away with one there too. his reaction that was a fastball letter high not as high as he's been elevating and it was fouled straight back. Florida had a two nothing lead in this game after that Langford Homer 10 unanswered runs that one is pulled and how about the shift working and that is the shortstop Thompson who is playing in that second base position with the lefty up Ryapel is denied. Perfect positioning here by the LSU defense. Maybe got it in on him just a little bit, but Jordan Thompson out there in shallow right field. Nice prep step. Good crossover and erases what would be a leadoff single from BT Ryapel. Luke Heyman, then Ty Evans. Heyman struck out his first time up. Very efficient outing for Hurd as well as he gets ahead on Heyman.
Oh. The Gators, nearly three quarters of their runs in Omaha are scored or have been scored with the ball going over the wall. During the season, it was around 44%. Popped up. Cruz didn't see it. Now he comes in. And he's able to camp under it to make the play for the second out. And it looks like Taylor Hall went to Chicago. The Bruins are dealing with a salary cap crunch issue. That's a swing and a miss. Taylor Hall's tenure in Boston after two years appears to be over. And the Blackhawks sent a whole bunch of things back to the Bruins. The 0-1. That's pulled. You've got to pick your poison with that you heard right now. And that fastball is played up. But again, he gave up hits to the first two in this game. Single home run has not given up a hit since. Nice he talked, though, at the World Series about different guys stepping up. Ackenhausen's start, you've got to circle that. I mean, that was a huge mm -hmm. start. What Hurd has been able to do. How Riley Cooper has really emerged as a guy that can save games. He knew all about Skeens and Cruz and White. And this one has popped up, and this is an easy one in foul territory for Tommy White. Heard is rolling along, and Tommy Tanks is coming up. Trying to add to a significant lead into the fifth we go. Well, look who has showed up, and uh, he's got some stuff that he may be going to work with. That's Paul Skeens as he has made his way out to the dugout. Yeah, he was a reliever at Air Force the last time that he was used out of the bullpen. And the crowd began to swell in their joy as Tommy White looking Ooh. right off of the second base umpire. It, it ate him up. White will stay at first base. There was, there was little chance to get out of the way of that one. So Jeff Head wore it. But Jeff Head getting some dude points right here. He wears this one like a champ. Like, I That had to be 100 plus right above the waist. Didn't even rub it. 1 to 113 off the ribs for Jeff Head. The scene, though, when Skeens was walking out was pretty cool. As soon as they discovered him in right field, they went nuts. When he got out to the bullpen, the Bleachers went crazy. They still haven't sat down. No, they haven't. They're they all, all staring. started standing up when he started walking out. He had the backpack. You get the big leagues usually it's the youngest guy in the bullpen is to, to bring the backpack down that has all the candy in it. That, that wasn't the candy backpack. That's all, all he needs to get himself ready. The reaction and the confidence from the LSU dugout as well. When he walked in, they all gave him high fives. Christian Little looked at me and he said, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly a feeling that they would have given the eight-run cushion and the best pitcher in college baseball available to go with a bullpen that, for the most part, has been lights out. It's a great position to be in if you're LSU as Morgan flies out to left field. Yeah, plus eight. Plus eight. <laughs> I think they like their spot. Another hit batter, and the Gators. Have now hit three. Aglione started it and it did not go his way or Florida's way and it set the tone for the entire game. So he only lasted one and a third and pick your poison here with the bottom of the order. Braden Jobert is three for three, two singles and a double. Oh, one. And everything is in sync. 
And it was Travinsky who said when he gets hot there's nobody more enjoyable to watch or harder to get out. It's crazy how it can come and go with Joe Bear too. I mean he can he can swing and miss with the best of them. But as Travinsky said when when he is locked in he can carry a team. It, it's inferno hot when he gets it going. A little squibber. Halter fielded it cleanly and the tag is made. Nice job by Heyman to come off the bag to get it. And slap the tag on Joe Bear. Both White and Dugas move up. Heyman really does a nice job over at first base. See Halter kind of grabbed the palm ball there that sailed. And Heyman wisely comes off and finishes that play. Now Jordan Thompson is a great example of how you win a crowd back after a nightmare start a couple of errors yesterday to this World Series he's had a terrific night looks at one high in there for a strike but a single and an RBI in his first at bat drove one to near warning track in center and then ends up with a double on a hopper over the third baseman's head All in. didn't take and it's one ball one strike. Bronx right now, don't you? The Jordan Thompson yell. Feel great for a kid though, don't you? Yes. They weren't yelling Jordan Thompson's name that way early in this series. He's going to be drafted. This guy at short got one there and he pulled it foul. Well, it's a good reminder for players too. Fans aren't really booing you; they're booing how you're playing, and they're not really cheering you; they're cheering how you're playing. <laughs> yeah. And so it's a it's a good reminder to. You know, you, you, you just kind of got to remove it from your identity and just play. Just just don't get caught up in the noise and, and try your best to flush it and move on to the next day. But the resilience he has shown, it's one thing to not be getting hits. It's another thing when the defense goes south, exactly. right? Especially as a shortstop. But well, he, I think he's won over a, a lot of fans here with the performance on the biggest stage. Three two and this one is to center and should be playable Langford bad jump now he's coming in and he's there to make the play Thompson retired Skeens may be activated at some point LSU has been active offensively he's as dominant as anybody we've ever seen at the collegiate level wow. this is hammered towards the wall Skeens Cruz Langford Three of the best in college baseball, and after his latest mock draft, our Kylie McDaniel projects Paul Skeens goes first, Cruz second, Langford third. As you like to say about a mock draft, subject to change. Shelnut puts it out, and Thompson's there to make the play at one quick out in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, there's a lot that could change, especially with the economics of the major league draft, but they have certainly not done anything. No during this college world series that would make anybody suggest from a talent standpoint that they're the three of those are one two three uh, you can kind of mix them up in whatever suits your fancy but but those three are real dudes those, yeah those three suits your fancy <laughs> who does pick third this year you know Rangers and Washington and Pittsburgh Pittsburgh's one yeah then Washington then Texas well, it's good year to good year to pick third. It is, and you know the Pirates have just struggled a little bit. They're still very much in a wild card race, but Skeens is the type of guy that certainly could impact the team this year if you were in contention. Thatcher Hurd looking like a major leaguer as he bends one in there to get ahead of Halter 0 and 2. You know the conversation around collegiate pitchers, and you can appreciate this too, KP. Detroit, excuse me, Detroit's third. Tigers third. Tigers. Then Rangers then the Rangers. fourth. Yep. You know, Skeens, this pitch, this would be on three days rest. Because this is so 
compacted. You, you take guys out of their routines. You know, Skeens is a six, every six day rest, yeah, yeah. he comes back. Yeah. Now you're throwing guys into four days, three days. And as much as you want to win a championship, you don't want to compromise, you know, the health of the guys like we just saw there and Singer and Kowar. And that's another strikeout for Hurd, whose breaking pitch is just wicked tonight. So there's a balancing act that you're working here. If you're Jay Johnson, if you're Skeens, yeah. all that's going into this consideration. I mean, when Jay talked about it, talked again today, he said, we're going to wait till he gets on the field, moves around a little bit, see exactly how that feels. I'm, I'm sure that there were multiple conversations, not just with Paul, but potentially with others. And who knows, we may not see him, but obviously he's out there and he's getting himself ready. Couldn't have gotten much more from Thatcher Hurd. Remember, he followed Skeens in that Wake Forest game, and he gave him three innings. So here he is now in the bottom of the fifth with two down. Yeah, Alex Malazzo's back out there with good. Big, big walking boot on his left. Ankle. He scored that run and he landed just terribly awkwardly. Took him off and now back to be able to be with his teammates. Oh, no! oh, this one was close, boys. What do you think? Oh, goodness. Billy V had it. Just a little bit off the plate. I meant the swing. Swing. Oh. Looking for punch out six. He's allowed only two hits and her delivers. Punch and he got it. Cade Curlin frozen pizza at the plate. It's 10 2. We got the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And LSU and the Tigers are feeling it. Sweet moment in the LSU dugout as everyone came to give Alex Malazzo a little hug and a love as he is there with a boot on his left hand. When Jay Johnson got to LSU, he started a tradition that he took from Rich Hill at USD. After every win, they take a team photo on the grass. And the idea of this was that, listen, it's really hard to win a game. So every time that we do this, I want you guys to soak it in, embrace it, remember how much you love the game, and they've done it even here in Omaha for every single win. We'll see if they do one tonight with a trophy in front of it. Yeah, and if they do, it'll be number 54 as far as that photo wall goes. So Malazzo's left ankle in a boot over there. He's getting all sorts of attention. Tommy White just went over and gave him an enormous pep talk. As it's now 0-2 as we start the sixth inning, Josh Pearson rode one out, got a home run. And that came in the fourth, all part of that four-run inning. They get six and one, four in the other, and he is gone on a sinker down. Caglione had a two-nothing lead and came up and plunked the first guy. And even though he was able to get through the first inning with two strikeouts of White and Morgan, after that, it just completely fell apart. But that was sort of a tone setter with that lead and then a, a hit batter. And he just never felt like he had control of that run on that fastball to his arm side. Really put left-handed hitters in jeopardy, and it ended up walking a bunch of righties. I think it's, it's so frustrating, I would assume, for Jack and for the coaching staff. Like, when it's right, it is special, special stuff from a left-hander that was up to 99 today, but when he gets off the rails, it's he's got a hard time getting it back on them. He's just he's a, young. He pitched last year. Right. He's just a year off Tommy John, yeah. a year and a half off Tommy John, whatever. I, I think his ceiling on the bump oh, is still enormously through high. the roof. Yeah. One, two, Travinsky. That's a good pitch. Tell him has been Looking at parts since he's been out there, and he is giving him a little bit of length. Two seamer. Just enough movement to come over and catch the outside black. So back to back strikeouts from Nesbitt here. Two quick outs in the sixth. Beloso plunked twice, single, and he struck out. Yeah, 
know, there are certain players that transferred into LSU. There's other players that just live and die and breathe the program. And you watch Beloso and his celebrations after some of those belly bombs in this series. I would imagine if he were to prick his finger, it would be purple, not red. And this guy bleeds it. He's had one heck of a World Series. Seven ribbies. And another laced ball into right for Cade Beloso. They moved him up to the one hole he has been on four times tonight. Jay Johnson pressing the right buttons. Cade Beloso now 10 for 25. Hitting up just a cool 400 with a couple long ones. So his 170th start at LSU, and the first time that he's let off. And like you said, Rav, he's now reached base four out of five times. Right. Also, got to be right in the mix for most outstanding, most valuable player here at the College World Series. He's had a heck of a run. Sure has. He and Tommy White. Cruz, another missile into left. And the LSU offense has just been hitting on all cylinders since the second inning. Third time, Cruz has been aboard. Hanging breaking ball, and Cruz knows how to get into his legs. Watch that right knee. Get into your legs, get below that breaking ball. Well, a couple rockets off the bat of Dylan Cruz. One to right field, one to left, his last two at-bats. Hasn't it been odd, fellas? We had six one-run games. You run into the wind yesterday mm -hmm. in a blowout, and here you are in another lopsided game. The series has been historical for its close games. This one's going to get into the screen just above the dugout. White's foot. Oh, right up top. Getting all beat up tonight, too. Get a hole in his left knee. Yeah. There's a few Tigers sporting some holes in their pants. Cruz has got one. Veloso's got one. <laughs> got some guys running around the bases and sliding. And there's that really wide base that White brings when he's got two strikes. Foul. Twenty three walks uh, twenty three strikeouts thirty nine walks for white. He's just such a difficult guy to strike out. And this one is into shallow center and underneath it is Langford. Bottom six coming up. Florida needs some runs badly. No, good point by Kyle Peterson, and uh, it's about as good as you can get. And these two guys haven't disappointed at all. The numbers here at the College World Series for Dylan Cruz, the Golden Spikes Award winner, and Wyatt Langford is now at the plate. And he looks at strike one from Thatcher Hurd. They're going to go top two or three. One, two, or three between these two 
And the guy out in that bullpen, who very likely now may just be watching, given in the eight run cushion. And they're going to hear their names called very early in the draft Chad. when we're in Seattle. Two time All American, he's the number one pick every other year. I mean, every other year he's the number yeah. one pick because Skeens is so aberrational, and Cruz is another one of those outliers. Yeah, and it, it wouldn't shock me if he still goes number sure, one. Sure. I think. Another rocket this time right at Thompson. Standard operating procedure, though, by Wyatt Langford to hit it hard, and that's the first time he's been retired. <laughs> I mean, him and Cruz have put on a laser show here in this one. That doesn't make him feel any better right now. He's trying to start the inning off and, and try to chip away, but boy, he's put on some sort of show here in Omaha. No, no. So Carlin started it with a single. Langford followed with a homer. The first two batters of the game, and they had two hits. We're in the bottom of the six, and they still have two hits. How dominant Thatcher Hurd has been. We have not had a hit since the first inning. Oh no. I mean, you just you can't say enough good things about Thatcher Hurd and the way he bounced back from I mean it was it was boom boom. Yeah. It was quick. There's a lot of things that can happen in a setting like this when you take two punches right away. But man, he has delivered them since then. Tagliel will be back next year. 33 home runs this season. There's a couple of guys that are coming back in college baseball who may threaten a number like that. But there is very few physical specimens like this guy, and he sends that foul. He walks in with his size 17 boats. And he he cuts a he cuts a vision for you. Yeah, I don't I don't know what he's going to be able to do for an encore offensively after a year like this, but I, I expect the pitching to get much better. Ooh, he got him there. A wicked breaking pitch. Caglione is out. That is strikeout number seven for Thatcher Hurd, and he's got the first two in the inning. Now we talked about the rise fastball early, but look how good the breaking ball has been tonight for Thatcher Hurd. And he can spin it. And he's also had the ability to control it. Look at this. 78.1 on that last breaking ball. Whoa. Spins it over 3,000 RPMs, about 20% more than the big league average. That is a real pitch at any level. Down. Yeah, the strikeout pitch has been the difference. You know, once you get, well, even tonight when Cac Leone started, once you get into the bullpens for Florida tonight and you get two strikes, it hasn't been the automatic punch out pitch. There's been a lot of foul balls and a lot of walks. Hurd gets ahead because he throws so hard and has that terrific breaking pitch. There's not a lot of foul balls, there are a lot of strikeouts. Yeah, he's he's done a really good job of putting hitters away when he's worked ahead. Inside. Close pitch, heard one of it. We'll go three and zero oh to Josh Rivera, the cleanup hitter and shortstop for the Florida Gators. Rivera season 352, 19 homers, and that's way outside ball four. Riley Cooper looks like he's warm down in the LSU bullpen. Now at 88 pitches, I just I don't know how much longer Thatcher Hurd's going to go. Well, they move Thompson over to second base again. B.T. Ryapel has shown this tournament that he can elevate and clear a fence. He's done it all year, and he's been good here. Oh. Hey. On the inside corner for a strike.
Three homers and double three runs batted in coming into this game here in Omaha. 0 for 2 tonight. Fastball and smoke to Good center field. Person. Cruz goes back and not a problem. Ryapel hit it well, but it ended up in the glove of the Golden Spikes winner. Seventh inning ahead, 10 2. Tigers. First played here. Right now. Well, that happened. <laughs> That is a live shot and it happening it as we speak. Okay. Came I'm down fine. here in 11 though and the balls have been flying this year so this ballpark when the wind and the wind really does dictate everything in this ballpark. If it's blowing neutral or blowing out you got a chance to set some numbers. If not you can't get it out of here. This is going to be a difficult play going over and that's a fair ball. That's going to set up. Well there's a runner. Turning and staying at first base. Morgan landed it in the Bermuda Triangle between Rivera, Shellnut, and Halter. But Kate Curlin held his ground, so it's a single. I don't think he was running at first. Just kind of trotting there. You see he's watching it, or he probably would have gotten two. Rivera almost got there. Right here, right at the end. Mm. Boy, he's inches away from making that play. That's the night it's been for LSU though while they've hit the ball hard and certainly deserve to be up by this oh, there was what? also that ball that bounced over Halter's head. There's that one that drops in there. They've had some go off. Pitchers and result in outs. But a dominant performance from Thatcher Hurd and some great hitting from the lower third of this batting order. Remarkable performance for the most part over the last week. Early they started okay, but 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 the last week or so for the bottom part of this Tiger order, it has been tough sledding, and they've been saving them up for Game Three because it, it it has been incredible to watch them work today. Nesbitt continues to use that little slider. And he's done a very good job after six runs in the second, four in the fourth. They got nothing in the fifth and nothing in the sixth. Outside. You know, you wonder too. They lost, obviously, and they've managed to beat Wake Forest, the number one overall seed, twice. As great as they are at Alex Box, you start to get familiar with the surroundings here. Yeah. You can get a little more comfortable. Maybe that's what we're seeing here with a peaking LSU offense. Well, it's always hard to be comfortable here when the wind's hitting you in the teeth. Yeah. Right? In the last couple of days, we've seen both these offenses. This is number one and Tied for number two home run hitting teams in the country. Florida number one, LSU tied with Florida Gulf Coast for number two. And we've seen the muscle from both squads over the last two days, that's for sure. Inside of Dugas, Ryan Pell almost looked surprised he was able to hang on to it. Well, the other thing that makes it very comfortable for the LSU Tigers is this giant bear hug they get every time they walk into this building from the 27,000 mm. Tiger fans. Score holds. It's going to be a quiet night at the Hilton. There'll be a whole lot going on over there tonight. <laughs> yeah, the Hilton Boston. Like what Hilton? Not this one. <laughs> You're not going to look for a nice quiet meal in the lobby of the Hilton. Well, in. That's well, in. So that is a ball four, and there's no play at second base. Damn it! <laughs> Trey Morgan expressing some frustration that he didn't steal the bag. He had a great slide. He wanted that to. To hold up. Still gets to stay there though. Morgan's got a terrific personality. You've heard him at the plate calling his own balls and strikes. When the ball crosses, if it's not good, he'll say ball. Nope. Nope. Oh, we got spikes on. Watch out. And we just went to the backstop. And now we're at second and third. And maybe Nesbitt's running out of some gas here. Paul Skeens looks like he's he's like legitimately heating up down there. He had spikes on. He's doing some rotational moves. He's starting to walk around with a purpose down there, boys. This is interesting. Well, oh, nice. It's down. Until you said that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he heard you too. One out. Whoa. And that one misses to Braden Jobert. Single, single, double. 
And then a ground out to third base. Start to think about these two teams and other teams that have either made it to Omaha or are beaten in the regionals and super regionals. These two will likely continue to be potential Omaha teams for a long time. I mean, Jay Johnson's got this thing cooking, and obviously, what Kevin O'Sullivan does with recruiting, transfer portal, pitchers. Kevin O'Sullivan's been here eight out of his 15 years in Florida. Eight out of 15 years. Crazy. Yo Bear is gone with a strikeout first out of the seventh. There is a renewed enthusiasm for Jordan Thompson. Johnson was telling me before the game, I asked him, he insists he's okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And the faith that they put into Justin Thompson, despite these College World Series struggles, pays off tonight. Jordan, I'm sorry, Jordan Thompson. I think I was confusing him with Justin Thomas. <laughs> Swing and a miss there. And Jordan Thompson retired second straight strikeout. Nesbitt with a good little bounce back. Fourth punch out tonight. Tyler Nesbitt's been really good. Man. I mean, this is exactly what, what Florida needed. If they're going to have any chance, obviously the offense has got to get it in gear here pretty quick. The first two reaching this inning, and he punches out Joe Barron Thompson to get to two outs. Josh Pearson had a home run as part of that four run fourth inning now really the only drama that is currently left for the LSU Tigers faithful here is will they see their hero schemes come out of the bullpen at some point watch out well, went in there in a hurry and now there's a ball search going on there it is had the glove we had everything ready now we got a souvenir from a World Series game in which maybe his team will be winning. Outside. Think about the Skeens Rhett Louder matchup. It was as good a pitching duel as yes. we've ever seen here in Omaha. And again, two more high first round picks. In this year's upcoming draft. That was one we'll remember for a long yeah. time. Two of the most talented college pitchers you will ever see, both on their A plus game. And you know, there's a lot of things that happen that can get lost, like Ty Floyd. Yeah. 17 <laughs> strikeouts. In eight innings. Years from now, if they hang on to win this, when they talk about the College World Series, the Floyd performance, the Ackenhausen performance, playing with Skeens and White and White's homers and Beloso hitting some bombs. Cooper closing deals. They'll They'll have some fun at the expense of Thompson, but Thompson's going to say, I got a championship. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget what I did in that final game either. It's like Mike Purnell coming on again. You want to take us to break, Berkey? Let's see what you got. All Tigers here in this one, 10 2. That's what you got? <laughs> Smack to right field. It is over the wall. It's 
been a lot of celebrating right now for LSU, and it started with them down two zip in the top of the first, and they exploded six in the second, four more. Our game track shows that Thatcher Hurd has really been lights out, literally has given up no hits since the first two batters of the game. Everybody is sharing the sugar tonight. Seven players with at least one RBI. They are seven for 15 with runners in scoring position. And that brings on Blake Purnell. A big double play last night. I mean, when Blake Purnell came in a game, it was, it looked like LSU may go on a run and win this thing in two straight, but instead rolled the double play. And after that, it was kind of off and running. Doesn't need the double play right here, but needs to get the Gators out of this thing and see if they can get these bats going because they are running out of time. Picarada and Purnell, they knew their importance of their performance. Helped give the team a chance to win. Sully knew he needed somebody to step up, and those guys did. Thatcher heard the star of the game tonight, and Malazzo left with an apparent bad ankle injury. He's in a boot. Watching the rest of this one, so this guy Hayden Travinsky, who is a big fella, will come up with the bases loaded. All right. Side armor throws that one in there for strike one. There is a lot of power in this guy's bat. Six three two thirty five. Cornell try to make quick work out of him. Oh, hey, Cherensky is a big part of this LSU story down the stretch. He did not get a lot of run early in the year as Brady Neal and Alex Malazzo got all the action, but down the stretch last couple months, he has been a huge source of offensive production for the Tigers. Ball down. How about Trevinsky taking one up right above the letters and then taking yeah. one just below the knees. That's the one that Purnell wants you to swing at. That's, that's where he makes his living. So those two seamers are just down a little bit out of the zone. Trevinsky doing a good job of forcing him into that zone. And now you go full with nowhere to put him. Beloso on deck. And they tell everybody we got a 3 2 count, two down. We're all going to start moving. Morgan, Dugas, and Pearson. They take off, and they're going to continue to run. Ball four, bases loaded, walk. 11th run of the game as Morgan touches home. First time he has scored tonight. And you can see when the bottom of the order is clicking, the relentless nature of this mm -hmm. offense. Florida put up 24 yesterday. LSU sitting on 11 with the bases loaded. And Beloso, a line shot that's caught. He hit it hard again, and he is squaring it into the glove of Rivera. Bottom seven coming up at the World Series. Today's Capital One rewarding performance is Mr. Hurd. Thatcher Hurd, who was so good out of the bullpen against Wake Forest. I gets a start. He was, uh, he was better. Six innings, give up a leadoff single and a home run. He allowed three base runners after that, did not allow a hit. So for third, Thatcher Hurd strikes out seven in his six innings. He's put LSU in a prime position to win their seventh national title. They turn it over to the big fella. Here's Riley Cooper, the junior, 6'2", 270 out of Fresno, California. Got a chance to live in some air conditioning yesterday. Everyone was out here watching that 24-2 game, and he was chilling, wasn't feeling very well, a little stomach bug. But he is back on the mound here and obviously a non save situation with an ERA of zero for appearances. He's given him eight and two thirds, four hits, no runs. He has struck out nine and walked three, and he has been outstanding. Prior to this, he didn't have a save. 
Breaking pitch center field. And that one is caught by Cruz. Not an easy one right at him. Well, a little more carry than you thought. A little wry smile there after he finished that one off. Riley Cooper's first fastball was 87. It'll be interesting to see what kind of juice he has after yesterday being under the weather. He's been 92 to 94 for the most part this entire World Series. This one driven to right, fairly deep. Joe Bear, he's at the wall. He'll leap. And did he catch it? No, it is over the wall for a homer. He came really close. But it's a home run and another one for Ty Evans. What an effort. That's the most home runs in by one player in the history of the College World Series. Ty Evans, take a bow, buddy. You just had one of the best weeks in Omaha anybody has ever had the best from a power standpoint a changeup that just kind of hangs out over the plate and Ty Evans just enough Joe Bear gets to the wall what's oh, in his glove it. wow that's Evans fifth home run of this World Series he had four homers all year he didn't start the first game here. <laughs> came off the bench and he started ever since this one is smoked to center. Now Cruz, he's going back, and this ballpark will hold it. Boy, what an incredible effort, Braden Jobert. He times it up just right, KP, and he sticks it, and for whatever reason, the glove just didn't hold it. Oh, man, that one stings. Yeah, he'll remember the five homers, but an empty feeling when you're doing it down 11-2. I and mean, Cooper's just trying to accumulate outs. Work. That's in there at 89. went over and playing very deep is Thompson and he's there to make the play we head to the eighth inning and we're starting to say we may not see these guys again on this field this may be the final at bat for Dylan Cruz when we come back to the World Series up 11 3 yeah he may join this list man Golden Spikes awarded in the national championship the last one to do it was Mark Cutts hey, look who did it in 1980 about it Tito Francona, Tim Wallach. Dylan Cruz won the Golden Spikes Award and he's trying to trying to cap off a memorable collegiate career with a World Series championship. How about National Freshman of the Year, two-time SEC Player of the Year, Golden Spikes winner, and potential national champion. That's a pretty good run. That's, that's a decent three years, Dylan. And he turned down the draft. And I think it's one of the best stories in college baseball that a kid who had a chance at Millions of dollars said no to have a college experience, and it doesn't get much better than the experience he's had. And he is going to make many more millions than what he originally turned down. He's looking at a slot value. The number one pick is around $9.7 million. Uh, size dad, I know you did KP in the lobby today. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's sort of awestruck by all of that's going on around his son Dylan. Hit there. They are awesome people, though. Down to earth. You get to know his dad. You realize why Dylan's such a humble kid and hard worker. Because I, I shook his hand after they were won the game to get in the championship series. Told him congratulations. He said, "For what? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't done anything yet." This one is to the gap, and here we got a chance to see Cruz run. This is screaming triple, and he is motoring. And he is in there with a head first dive for a triple. Dylan Cruz. Showing off another one of those aspects that make him so desirable 
at the next level. Go ahead and cap it off, kid. Just cap off a legendary career. He had a double at the box in his last at bat in Baton Rouge, and now a triple in what will likely be his last at bat as a Tiger, and he is Steph Curry in it to the ring finger wow. right there. Angel Reese of LSU, oh, there you women's go. basketball was the one I think a lot of people, certainly watching tonight, will remember. Cruz's second triple of the year, and he gets to do it here in Omaha. Oh, and yeah, there's Kim Mulkey, right? Angel Reese, of course, winning a championship. What do you think is going through Tommy White's head right now? Get another ribby? <laughs> Not slow down. <laughs> there it is. And that is another. RBI. Cruz will come on in. White with that obscene 680, now like 690 batting average when Cruz is on base, delivers the 12th run for the Tigers. Now that's got to feel great for Dylan Cruz. And that was a guy that helped get Dylan Cruz mm -hmm. to LSU right there. Paul Maneri got a hand in all this. When Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan committed to LSU, they were committing to Paul Maneri. I know. The softball catch, KP? Softball bullpen right okay. now. Yeah. Right. This place will go bananas when Skeens gets on the mound to close out. A World Series championship. Oh. Jay Johnson wasn't kidding when he said he will pitch tonight. He'll be on the mound tonight. It may be the ninth inning, maybe the eighth inning, but very much looks like you're not going through this exercise and not coming into a game. On the ground, seeing I single. White will just jam the brakes on there at second. And Trey Morgan. Continues the hit parade. That's 18 of them tonight for the Fighting Tigers. 18 hits for LSU and 10 free base runners. That's a lot of traffic. And it cannot end soon enough for that guy right there, Kevin O'Sullivan. This is a Bayou party right here, fellas. That's what this became at that six run second and four run fourth. Yeah, couldn't have started any better with the two run homer. A zero in the first, a two run homer in the bottom half. From that moment on, it has been a Tiger parade. Jay Johnson looking to become the first coach to win the World Series in his second year. When I told him that, he, he said, yeah, I'd, but I didn't get it done in my first. <laughs> I think they'll forgive him. All in. Two balls, no strikes. This is Gavin Dugas. In front of what 12,000 Alex box uh, on average Yeah, they jam it yeah 12 and a half and they sell it out every time there may be that many LSU fans here tonight wait what there, there may be I think there's more than 12 and a half there's 25,000 LSU fans <laughs> so I said there may be okay. <laughs> I'll take the over yes I was at DFW earlier today. I think there were 12,000 on the plane I was on. <laughs> Been a rough sled right now for the New York Mets. Buck Showalter in New York. We're loaded one more time. And a pitch to hit. Fielded on the ground. A second for one. They will not turn the double play. And they now have their own 10 run lead. It's 13-3.
nice pick here by Josh Rivera. That was a tough chance. Erlin did all he could to finish it off, but Joe Bear just too fast down the line. Nevertheless, the Tigers had another. A lot of questions about the impact of a 24-4 loss. We had a loss like that earlier this year, and Jay Johnson sent a gif around, which was just a flush toilet. Like, let's get rid of that memory, and they... They went right home yesterday and basically got the day to just forget yeah. about it all because it was an early day game. Yeah. Miss Johnson told us last night we were walking. Looked at Berkey and I said, you guys are golfers. I feel like uh, that was match play and I just made a 20 on one hole. But I just lost a hole. That's it. They knew they still had a shot tonight. And yeah. a night after everyone in the offensive starting lineup for Florida scored, LSU was returned to favor and done the same thing tonight. Two zero to Jordan Thompson, and now it's two and one. It's been a remarkable run. This LSU team was everybody's preseason. Number. Yes, they were. Hard. They wore that crown for for three quarters of the season before they finally stumbled and lost a weekend, and Wake Forest took it over. But this has been the most famous team all year long, and the, their ability to rally the troops. Jay Johnson figured out the. The bullpen, the bullpen pieces yep. we wanted to go with on the day three of a weekend. And they have responded in incredible fashion here down the stretch. It's Malazzo who has taken a seat, or I should say a stand. This one is to left field off the bat of Thompson. He's watching it, but it is going to be caught out there in left field. And touching home. With the 14th run of the game is Morgan. They don't mind adding on here right now. They do not mind at all because many of them sat through yesterday when it was the other way. Sack fly for Thompson. And a really good bounce back day for him. Watch out, another hit batter. That's the fourth. Pearson gets drilled. Been an ugly performance from the Gator pitchers tonight. Yeah, this one's been rough after they saw it happen to the other pitching staff last night. Except into the first inning, they have had at least five come to the plate in every inning. And Kyle gave you the one stat that every player from LSU has scored a run. Well, nine different players have a hit. They've all scored a run, and they have an RBI. Nine different players. The great Marco Mento delivering some notes tonight. Nailed it. Skeens in the eighth or Skeens in the ninth? What do you think? Uh, it's got to be the ninth, I would think. Unless you're going to bring him in in the eighth, and you think he's going to he's going to finish it. Gidry. Looks like Gidry. Yeah, I think it's Gidry in the eighth, and then Skeens just starting to throw now. A little pop and circumstance for all the folks that made the trip here to Omaha. Watch maybe the greatest pitcher in LSU history walk off the mound. For the World Series. Skeens has been compared to the Steven Strasburgs, Mark Pryors, Josh Beckett's 
He knows there are things he needs to improve on, in particular the secondary pitches. And there's a shot. Rivera makes a nice play from the hole. Mm. Strong arm. Wow, nice play. Rivera off the bag, though. They say was Heyman. So we'll keep it going for the Tigers. That is a big league arm. Yes, it is. There. He, he, watch him get these feet organized and put that right foot in the ground and rip it. I guess Luke Heyman just couldn't quite keep the right foot. No, just a touch off the bag. A heck of an arm move by Josh Rivera. Travinsky now makes it 10 with a hit. And Beloso will end it. We'll see if Skeens comes out for the eighth, or it's going to be Gidry first. As you know, man, there have been no breaks. After yesterday's 24-4 loss, people wondered how they would sleep, how they'd get up, and how they'd respond. And the answer came fairly quickly with 10 runs in the first four innings. Skeens will have to wait, but that's going to happen. First, it's Gavin Gidry, the freshman, making his 23rd appearance. The Lake Charles, Louisiana native with some terrific numbers. And just another piece of a bullpen. Jay Johnson's looking forward to seeing come back. Yeah, big part of the bullpen. He may be the shortstop next year. Yeah. Um, ultimately, Gidry's not going to pitch this summer. He's, he's just going to play short focus on offense, but has been a giant part of their bullpen this year. It's low to mid-90s with an outstanding break of ball. Celebration has begun. So you take away game two. This is what the LSU pitchers have done. And you'll have a game like you did game two. Sub two, 21 walks, 87 strikeouts. Floyd gives you 17. But the bullpen, in the best two out of three, if you have one egg and you have two dominant oh, performances, one. guess who wins the championship? Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the pitching staff has been incredible. And again, you give them the one mulligan on a day where things got a little goofy but this wasn't what people were expecting from LSU to start this postseason yeah right field Carlin and exit stage right he got into that thing and it flew out in a hurry the freshman takes Gidry to the pen How about that thing from the freshman it's supposed to be in high school still. This was supposed to be his senior year. He left early. Berkey, that's number 17 on the year. And this one, this one wasn't even close. Now, how about getting below a fastball down and away? Heads up, Mr. Skeens. 17 homers, his first one of the postseason. What a future Cade Curlin has. What a future Wyatt Langford has. He's up now, and he swings at the first elevated pitch, and that's another souvenir for a fan here. Although, if anyone's going to try to get it, it's going to be Morgan. <laughs> He'll go try to get that. He usually does get it. Wake Forest beaten by LSU twice. They had to do the second one without Nick Kurtz as you talk about great first baseman. last at bat here in a Gator uniform we talked about Cruz's career why at length for Kevin O'Sullivan said he's got to be the the best pure hitter he's coached now obviously Pete Alonzo and Jonathan India are major league stars but at Florida the two years he's put up as good as anybody in that uniform you know, he also has put his head down and is just running hard all the way to second base before that ball is caught in foul territory by Dugas and that would like to be the end of Wyatt Langford's career, historical as it was. His next stop will be with a Major League Baseball team. What's so impressive about Langford, and there are plenty of things, is he didn't play his freshman year. And there's a lot of guys who don't play their freshman year and they go somewhere else. Yep. He did. He hung around. He's turned himself into a lock top five overall pick and one of the best hitters in the country. Aguilon was the starter and just didn't have his stuff tonight, so he came out quickly. And it will be a disappointing College World Series for a, another guy that is going to make an impact at the next level. In some way, whether throwing 99 or yeah. with that 33 home run potential in his bat that we've seen this year realized. 
Switch it up. There you, go. you lean towards pitching. Not a lot of lefties throwing 99. Yeah, you know, I just, it's fascinating that he's hit 33 homers and has 90 ribbies, and, and I still think his highest ceiling's on the mound. The, the reality is he plays in an era now where he doesn't have to make that decision, and the team might let it play itself out. That's been a tough night for Kags. Three strikeouts was hit by a pitch, and obviously didn't throw his best on the mound, but still a year to where he has led the country in home runs with 33 and he will be back next year just yep. a sophomore. Now Rivera he swings and misses and Gidry's got a good slider working there at 83. Like R Rivera projecting as a major leaguer. Oh yeah. Rolls one of the shortstop Thompson. Line hey, safe. Too. He dragged Turner uh, Morgan, I should say, off the bag. So Rivera will reach. I think Josh Rivera can play shortstop in the big leagues. The, the offense has made a gigantic jump this year, and he's proven that he can hit the ball to the ballpark and, and drive in runs, but. That glove is going to allow him to play this game for a while. A.T. Ryapel, strike one. LSU's got 53 wins on the season. They went 19 and 10 in the SEC. This will be their first World Series title. Since 2009. Of course, Skip Bartman was the man from the mid 80s to the 2000s. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like a while for the Tigers because that's just what an incredible run they were on from 91 to 09. Here, back to the mountaintop now. DJ LeMay, who's and Alex Bregman's of the world that were part of this, all watching very closely as that's the third out of the eighth inning. Ryapel retired. One more inning to go before they take home another title. Back to Baton Rouge. It is the year of the Tigers. The LSU Tigers have got a lot of people that have contributed to this run through the course of the season. Tonight, White delivers. Pearson goes over the wall. And yes, Angel Reese, Dylan Cruz, they point to the finger, and that means we are going to be national champions. And yes, Angel Reese tweets out, Baseball team, national champs too. Heard you. <laughs> well, he gets another one. We thought the triple was the end. Yeah, he we did. He gets one more here. We did. LSU has won six national championships. They've been in 18 College World Series. And one more shot for Dylan Cruz. And why wouldn't you just lace one back up the middle? Become batting practice for Dylan Cruz. Triple single and the bench bowing down to Cruz for what he's done. I don't know. Four, four more hits tonight. Three singles and a triple. How about it? 110 hits. 110 hits on the season for Dylan Cruz. They will keep that baseball as a memento for Dylan Cruz. And he will have a whole bunch of memories for. Four more hits for Cruz. All lasers tonight. And no softies. 108 hits on the season. White sends this one to the line in right, and that is just going to be foul. So Paul Skeens has come in from the bullpen. And unless he enters the mat, no, that, no, that's, there's an indicator. 
think we're going to see Skeens unless he's fooling everybody. He's going to see him on the mound tonight. Trade one more sight of Paul Skeens for a national championship, wouldn't you? Take the ring. Oh, yeah, they're not, they're not worried, worried about, about that. Now. No. You know, the part of what you hear with LSU and obviously when you have a team that wins as many as they do is this chemistry thing. But Johnson has had them together all year and you, you bring in a bunch of guys from the portal and have to have them fit in. Now yeah. that's not necessarily no. the easiest thing in the world to do. No and that's where Trey Morgan Gavin Dugas Braden Gilbert Cade Beloso come in so important. I mean you've got guys that, that all four of them grew up around there bled this program from the time that they were growing up and they have welcomed them all. What an answer to a 24 4 loss. A 10 run lead of your own. This game will teach you to have a short memory. Any team that's ever played at a high level all has a story of a day where it went sideways on them and they were able to plush it and recover. This is about as loud of an example of that as I can remember on the biggest stage. But in some ways, and we talked about it yesterday, like when you lose like that, it's about sixth inning, seventh inning. Emotionally, you've, you've kind you've of already, already started. On. Yeah, and like you said, it was a day game, so there was extra time to recover. And of course, once that offense got rolling, it was all downhill from there. Right, that's a fair ball. That's past the dive of the third baseman, Halter. Cruz is not stopping. He's coming home. He'll score. White into second. 15 to 4. The LSU Tigers thrashing the Gators. Well, we've all been impressed by Ellie De La Cruz running the bases. Dylan Cruz yeah. got another gear when he yeah. when he goes. It's a blur. Yeah, when he smells another 90, there's there's a little bit more in the tank. And the exact same thing right here down the line. I mean, he peaks. No, we're not peaking anymore. He pulled up just for a minute. Thought maybe he was going to get the stop sign. Did not. Scores all the way from first base. And Tommy Tanks drives in yet another run. That ties him for the national lead with 105 ribbies. How about this? Cruz started the day with 97 runs, and he scored three That's to get to 100. They now have two players, that, or a player that has scored 100 and driven in 100. Keep it going here. This one goes all the way to the wall. And another double for Trey Morgan, 16 to 4. And everybody is pointing to what ultimately is going to be given to them a College World Series ring. All right, this is not a walk Kevin O'Sullivan wanted to make down by 12 in the ninth. Nobody out. Has been coming out and. <laughs> Been a party since about the fourth inning for LSU. Sixteen runs, twenty-two hits. Cruz and Skeens. You'll never see it again at LSU, but you're never going to forget it either. We're back. It is a 16-4 game right now. We're trying to teach some new tricks when it comes to dancing. We had the sprinkler going. Gator chomp going. I saw Greedy. Yeah, this party's just started. It's not going to end either until we get back to Baton Rouge. You mentioned it, Berkey. 100 plus RBIs and 100 runs scored from two different guys is not something you're likely to see again for a long, long time. No, I, I don't think it's ever happened, and I don't think it ever will. I, I don't. I just. It's incredible what those two have been able to do. And the Tommy White batting average with Dylan Cruz on base it's, is. That's unheard of. <laughs> it actually went down tonight. No, it didn't. It went up. He's three for four. 
Yeah. Yeah. 750 tonight, and so we're now nearing 700. Yeah. That's a we. That's just a really strange, incredible number. Incredible. That's a great scene there. Unfortunately, one guy, Alonso's got crutches, but getting a hug from the ultimate teammate, the transfer from Air Force, and Paul Skeens. Jamison center field, and Langford is there to make the play. Morgan will advance to third base. Gavin Dugas, that's one heck of a run, young man. Guy's worn number eight the last couple of years in his last AB. Only one team gets the chance to do this at the end of a baseball season. And this year it's the LSU Tigers. 22 hits yesterday. Florida had 23 hits, which was a single game record tying number. So the next hit will match what the Gators did yesterday in a World Series for a number of hits in a game. How does a team answer and this is such a such a great example for anybody out there watching you lose 24 yes. 4 it doesn't mean the world ended it means the game ended that one will tie the record and Joe Bear has blasted another 18 runs for the Tigers and when Braden Joe Bear gets on a roll we are witnessing it tonight. No doubter. Wow. They just keep on coming. <laughs> Talk about hitting being contagious, Berkey. It looks like a beach ball to all of them since inning two. Dead. Yeah, it's just been a hit parade. And a it, hit parade. I mean, <laughs> you can't can't believe how much this game has literally flipped from yesterday to today. But both of these offenses that are extremely talented have been showing off over the last two days. The Tigers won an epic one in game one, and then the last two have just been run scoring parties. Blowout city. And again, Thatcher Hurd took that offense of Florida yesterday and put in his back pocket with his start tonight. Outside. Names that will go down in the history of LSU as far as baseball players go. Sky high pop up. Wyatt Langford is there to make the play. Check out the check out the smoothness of the left handed stroke of Joe Bear. One last Joe bomb a hanging breaking ball and does it get any prettier than that follow through. Braden Joe Bear lean back on it young man enjoy the ride. One of the sweetest swings you will see in baseball and what a way to finish it off. Gary Jones going to get a chance to hit here, the freshman out of Marietta, Georgia. USC's got 12 national titles. LSU with this one will move to seven. All one. Second all time. 
Second all time. Yeah, the tie with the Longhorns. Yep. And they came out of the loser's bracket, which is a difficult thing to do. They had to win four times in four days. Dealt with some one run games along the way. Jones, pump your fists as he's bouncing to first base. That's the 24th hit. So guess what that means? Another record? Another record. 23 was the game tying one yesterday that Florida did. Then LSU tied it tonight, and they break it thanks to Jared Jones. It's just crazy, man. It, this the whole tournament was pitching defense. Yes. Nobody had scored more than seven runs in a game until yesterday. And we got back to back record setting offensive nights. How about this, too? Since the start of 2017, there have been six College World Series. This will be the fifth different SEC team to win. Yeah. You know, it's one thing when it when a conference school wins a ton of them and maybe it's just one or two programs but five different programs since 2017 from the southeastern conference will be the will be the champs that that is an incredible run from one conference Hunting. well it's one thing to be a trendsetter like angel reese was saying yep we got ourselves a natty and it's contagious. Cruz, give me one. I'll take one. Yep, give me one too. Everybody delivers a hit. Everybody scores. Everybody has an RBI. Nine different players. You, know, you think back too, they beat Wake Forest, the overall number one seed. Trey Morgan doesn't come oh, blowing man. in from first base. We yes. may not be in this position. No. Season saving play. They win three straight elimination games just to get to the finals. And Josh Pearson made a game saving yes. catch in game one of this series. Yep. Make the throw. There you go. Thompson, a perfect strike for the first out. And a bit of a struggle for him, but he made a perfect throw, and they are two outs away. Tigers identify Jay Johnson as the guy they wanted to lead this program having brought Arizona to Omaha Johnson did not want to leave but he knew there was one place one place that would give him the opportunity to win every single season he went in he brought Skeens over from Air Force Tommy White ends up with 100 plus RBIs Dylan Cruz will end up as a top one or two draft pick the formula has led to this. And there will be a ton of emotion as soon as they get this last out. Dale Thomas will be the guy at the plate. No, no. Thatcher Hurd was outstanding tonight. Cooper, Skeens, Herring, they've had so many different players contribute. Oh. Well, 
And this place is ready to explode in celebration. Yeah. Three balls and a strike. Not yet. Single in the left field keeps it going. Good on Dale Thomas right there too. First to bat of the game gets a chance to go up there. Gets himself a knock in the finals. Colby Halter. <clears throat> right number one from Gidry. Strike away. And this crowd clad in gold and purple have moved Alex Box north here to Charles Schwab Field. Get reset to deliver. You guys remember seeing a crowd so one-sided in this 25,000 seat place? I mean, come on. Ole Miss Mississippi State yeah. traveled pretty well. They <laughs> did. But there's there's a whole lot of purple and gold more. There it is. And for the first time since 2009 and seventh overall, the Tigers can say we are champions. Amazing turn of events. Well, it's after getting trounced 24 to 4. 24 to 4 yesterday, less than 24 hours, you know, 27 hours later, they come back, score 18 with a record setting 24 hits of their own and just destroy the Gators. Well, from the start of the season, everybody identified the Tigers as the most talented team in the country. It wasn't always perfect, right. but they figured out a formula on the mound down the stretch. And today we saw the talent of this roster shine through. And once they put a six spot up in the second inning, it was all Tigers from there. It's, it's crazy to watch, right? I mean, what we, what we talk coming in is, are they going to have enough pitching besides Paul Skeens? Ty Floyd struck out 27 in two starts. Here at the College World Series and ultimate ultimately the, the rest of that bullpen and pitching staff. One of the main reasons why how about Paul Skeens <laughs> throwing Malazzo on his back and taking him out there too. He's this throwing is, the uh, team on his back all year. Here's Chris. Coach you're shaking your head when you met with this team in August you said this was possible. How'd they make it into a reality for this team. Right people right place right time. Um, this was the way it's supposed to go and uh, probably more impressive than winning the national championship is they were national champions every single day from the first meeting till the last pitch tonight. Some of those right people Paul Skeens Dylan Cruz and a whole group of others that will play their last game in a gold and purple uniform. What has this experience been like coaching them. Right of a lifetime I, th those guys don't ever come along and we had two of them on the same team and. They're better players than people. They're the leaders of this thing, and 
I'm literally speechless because all these guys had was the massive expectations all year long. And they met them, and they didn't just meet them by winning a national championship. They met them every single day. There's a lot of pressure when you take that job at LSU for to coach this baseball team and you win a championship. What does it mean to bring a trophy back to Baton Rouge? Let's go. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. No, he's got that right. Let's go. And they're going to keep on going. The once in a lifetime combination of white and Cruz offensively, but as he just alluded to, the once in a lifetime opportunity to coach somebody like Paul Skeens and Cruz doesn't happen. That guy right there, Paul Skeens, our Capital One tournament most outstanding player. Didn't have to use him tonight, much to the relief, I'm sure, of many people. But man, there's no dominant, no more dominant pitcher on the planet in college baseball than Paul Skeens, and one we may not see for a long time either. Now, you talk about the offensive superlatives, and obviously, I mean, Cruz and Tommy White were a big part of that. Paul Skeens just had one of the best collegiate baseball seasons on the mound that, that we've ever seen, um, and caps it off with just a little bit, a little bit more hardware here yeah. in Omaha. Now he's going to hear his name called very, very early here in about two weeks. Go ahead, Chris, if you're ready. Yeah, Dylan's got the hardware. How's this feel, my friend? Oh, my gosh. This is what I've dreamed of ever since I was a freshman. This moment right here, holding this trophy, it's the best feeling in the world. I, I, can't, I can't put words to it. I'm, we're champions, baby. Bring it back to LSU. Let's go. You bet on yourself to come to college and not go in the draft when you were a senior in high school, but part of it was also to experience all this. What's it like to be able to celebrate a national championship? I mean, it's been a long journey for us, you know, dealt with a, with a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, I, just to finally say that we're, we're national championship champions, I mean, I cannot wait to put another flag over at the field. It's going to be awesome. Congratulations. Enjoy it, Dylan. Thank you. Thank you. Couldn't get Dylan Cruz out all year. Couldn't get him out here tonight. Skeens, 21 strikeouts in two games, 209 set a record past Ben McDonald. Alex Malazos in a boot. He certainly gets a lot of credit here. I mean, as individual as these guys can be, the team showed up tonight. They did. It was the bottom half of the lineup was yep. incredible, right? Then the stars kind of poured it on late. But Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens, two of the best ambassadors for college baseball that we could ever ask. So that is Let's Go spelled G-E-A-U-X. Yes, it is. Not G-O tonight. The Tigers are national champs again.